Darian Hagan era at CU reads like a fairy tale. Undefeated in Big 8 play over three seasons. Now it's his Folsom Field finale. And once again, he's got his team in position for a run at the Orange Bowl. It's right where Bill McCartney wants to be. I want to play the best possible opponent. I want to beat Kansas and beat Iowa State and get in the Orange Bowl and play either Florida State or Miami. That's my hope. In their way today, the Kansas Jayhawks. No longer doormats in the Big Eight. A win today could have KU knocking on the door of a bowl bid. It's Colorado and Kansas. The final home game for the 1991 Golden Buffalo. Channel 4 Sports presents CU Buffalo's football. Live from Folsom Field in Boulder, it's the University of Kansas Jayhawks versus the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Welcome to Folsom Field, everybody. I'm Les Shapiro, along with Dave Logan. It's the final home game for the CU seniors. And Dave, one of those seniors basking in the afterglow of an heroic effort last week. Well, Les, as a senior, you always like to look back on your career, and you'll come up with two or three key moments that you will remember forever. Robbie James will remember what happened last week in Stillwater probably better than any one thing. It was James the holder as Jim Harper with the fake 36-yard field goal. Robbie James rolls out and finds a wide open Christian Foria and the Buffs pull out a big big win. James a 50 year senior from Strasburg, Colorado. He'll never forget that moment I guarantee you. Buffs went into that game a heavy favorite over Oklahoma State. They come into today's game a heavy favorite over Kansas but I think the Buffs learned from last week not to take anybody too lightly. Well and they're playing a much better team. Kansas is by far a better team than Oklahoma State. There's a lot to play for for both teams. Kansas if they win one of their two remaining games probably will go to the Freedom Bowl. And of course Colorado still in the running for the Orange Bowl if not the Cotton Bowl if not the Blockbuster Bowl. So plenty of things left in this season for Colorado. Folks here at Folsom in Boulder will get their last look at a senior quarterback, Darian Hagan, probably the best quarterback in CU history. Without question, and you can probably take away the qualifier. I think Darian Hagan's the best quarterback to ever play for a CU football program. And Hagan, of course, has had all sorts of numbers. He's the Buffs' all-time total offensive leader, 5,764 yards. He's a guy that has made the option attack go. He's made countless big plays in his career. He ranks second, as you see, in Colorado's all-time passing yardage uh, behind Steve Vogel, and he's but one touchdown pass away from the all-time CU record for most touchdown passes in a career. Uh, there are few things that he has not done, and Darian Hagan, I think, is the best of all time. There's a senior on this Kansas team that's not too shabby a player. His name is Tony Sands. Well, here's a young man that probably is going to have a tough time getting used to the weather. He's out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Tony Sands, 5'9", 170 pounds. Not many people recruited him because they thought he was too small. He's the all-time leading rusher for Kansas. He's eclipsed the marks of both John Riggins and Gail Sayers. And he's a guy that is a big play man. You'll probably see him carry the football 30 to 35 times this afternoon. Well, as you can see, we have snowy conditions here in Boulder. They call the weather the great equalizer. We'll see how equal when we come back for the kickoff. Today's game is brought to you by State Farm Insurance and by First Federal Bank, both proud companies for Colorado, and by McDonald's, by Infinity, by Cellular One, and by Coors Light. You! You made me love you. <laughs> you made me love you. You made me want you. The McDonald's Big Mac is irresistible. Add fries and a Coke, and so is the deal. The Extra Value Meal at McDonald's today. A great price for a great meal. Mmm, Big Mac sandwich, large fries, medium Coke, $2.99. Plus tax, prices may vary. You're gonna love it. It is one thing to accelerate from a standing start. Quite another at high speed. Infinity designed the Q45 to do both. With a variable valve timing system so advanced, there is no compromise at any speed. Infinity has, for the first time, blurred the lines between luxury and performance. Imagine you're out camping, <clears throat> and 
then your food runs out on you, and then your water runs out on you, and then your wife runs out on you, and then the lightning starts, and then the rain starts, and then your car won't start, so then you pull out your cellular phone, and then you call mom, and she comes and takes you home, <clears throat> and then she gives you soup. Hello, Ma. For years, you've depended on State Farm to insure your home. Daddy! But did you know you can also depend on us to provide financial security for those you love? State Farm. We sell life insurance. Be sure to contact your Denver Metro Area State Farm agent soon for a free family insurance checkup. We'll throw the graphic up over Mark while he's talking. And Ralphie takes the field for the final time this year at Folsom. This is an emotional time for the seniors here at CU who are being introduced on the field as we speak. 14 seniors, but before we talk about them, let's go down to the field and our Mark McIntosh who's going to give us a weather update. Thank you very much, Les. The snow plows were just out on the field. They've got the field uncovered now, so that shouldn't be a problem. It's snowing lightly right now, but I guess the weather forecast is for a winter storm warning for the Denver metro area in about an hour. The snow is supposed to pick up as it comes through Denver, so it could get worse as the day goes on. But right now, as far as the temperature is concerned, it's about 37 degrees. It's quite comfortable. I think the main thing is for people to try to stay dry. The ball is going to be very slick. The cold won't cause a problem as much as the slickness of the ball created by the wet snow coming down. Back up to you guys. You're right, Mark. The field looks pretty good from up here. There is a fine snow falling right now, not a very heavy one. There's Darian Hagen. One of 14 seniors being introduced before the crowd here. I'll give you the list of the others. Jim Adams, Sean Brown, Spencer Coulter, Rodell Guest, Jim Harper, Mark Henry, Robbie James, Jay Lewenberg. There's Joel Steed right there, the fine nose tackle. Chris O'Donnell, Tony Senna, Rico Smith, and Greg Thomas. Have a pretty good crowd here at Folsom Field today. The Buffs will set a season attendance record. You probably won't see every seat filled because of the weather. However, more than 50,000 seats have been sold for today's game. And it's the first time in Buff history they have averaged 50,000 plus in back-to-back -back seasons. Well, not many seniors, only 14 that will not be with the program next year, but guys that have made astounding contributions. You think of Jay Lewenberg, what he's done in four years here. Joel Steed has a chance to be an all-big eight nose guard for three consecutive years. Darian Hagen, we were talking about him. Greg Thomas at free safety. Been some great players that have lasted four and five years, and this is the kind of game you always remember. You remember what you did your last game, how you felt. You see Darian Hagen, this will be it for him at Folsom Field. Well, let's take a look at the series record between these two teams. CU leads it. 29 wins, 18 losses, and three ties. The Buffs have won the last six meetings, including last year's meeting in Lawrence, Kansas. The Buffs beat KU 41 to 10, and the Buffs with a fine defensive effort last year in which they held Tony Sands, the Kansas running back, to just 22 yards in 13 carries. There's a look at the KU coaching staff taking the field, led by the head coach, Len Mason. And Bill McCartney of CU leads his troops out. Mack, of course, in his 10th year here in Boulder, a record of 63, 48, and 3. Kansas in its usual crimson and blue, with a chance at playing in a bowl for the first time in 10 years. There is a Freedom Bowl representative here to look at the Jayhawks. And of course, the Buffs with a number of bowl possibilities. If they win the Big Eight, they go to the Orange. They could possibly land in the Cotton Bowl. A representative from that bowl is here today. The Blockbuster Bowl is represented here today, taking a good long look at the Buffs. There's the Kansas situation. If Kansas ends up six and five, that means if they win just one of their final two games, they could end up in the Freedom Bowl. The Freedom Bowl has stated it would be happy to take a team 
that hasn't been to a bowl game in a long time, and Kansas hasn't been to a bowl in 10 years. There's a look at the CU kicker, Mitch Berger. What a wonderful year he's had kicking off. Only 19 of his 50 kickoffs have been returned. The other 31 have gone well into or out of the end zone. Berger, a sophomore out of British Columbia, a real fine for Bill McCartney and his staff. And back to receive the kickoff for Kansas. Number two on the right of your screen is George White. And number 22 on the left of your screen is Charlie Bowen. We are underway in Boulder. And the Jayhawks don't even bother trying to field that kickoff out of the end zone. So Kansas will start with the ball at its own 20-yard line. And let's take a look at that Jayhawks offense at quarterback. You've got the junior, Chip Hillary. Tony Sands shooting for another 1,000-yard season. And Kenny Drayton, their leading receiver. Your offensive line has been together every game this year. Started every game together. Perez, Hempstead, Schmidt, M. Wally, and Lonica. Here we go. First and 10 for Kansas from its own 20. And the give goes to the fullback, Roger Robin. Greg Beaker throws him for a loss, along with Joel Steed. Let's take a look at that CU defense. On the line, Renfro, Steed, and Diet. The linebackers, Chad Brown, Greg Beaker, their leading tackler. Ted Johnson, the freshman, and Ronnie Wolfort. And the defensive backs. Dion figures Ronnie Bradford Eric Hamilton and Greg Thomas the co-captain a very solid lot for CU no gain on that last play so it's second and ten for Kansas and Hillary picks up five yards before he slips and falls Ted Johnson and Chad Brown there to tag him down you'll see Chip Hillary move around quite a bit this afternoon trying to avoid the pass rush that CU hopes to generate Chip Hillary is a big guy and yet he is fairly mobile for his size he feels the outside pressure there from Ronnie Wolfork picks up about six yards this will be a game that unlike the Nebraska game because there is moisture in the air I would imagine both teams will try to keep the football and yet have a very difficult time turnovers could play a key role in today's game third and six this is Sands Gets close to first down yardage. Let's see where that ball is marked. He was banged up by a couple of black jerseys. Pretty good right around the 30. Greg Beekert and Leonard Renfro among those black jerseys. And he does get the first down. Tony Sands, the Kansas all-time rushing leader. Which is pretty remarkable considering some of the people who have come out of that school, including Gail Sayers and John Riggins. And you, also you also take a look at his career mark. He's averaging close to five yards per carry for his career. So he's not a guy that's been given many, many opportunities and thus has more yards. First and ten from the 30 for Kansas. This is George White. Gets a couple. Beekert once again is there along with Chad Brown. I think you'll see both teams, as you've seen Kansas so far, try to establish running the football between the tackles pretty tough to get outside even though the turf has been cleared because the footing is not that good so you'll see both teams come off the football want to get a good feel for the they running game and run right between the tackles second and eight for KU Hillary overthrows his man almost picked off by Greg Thomas Well, Greg Thomas has really picked it up in the last few weeks. This is a pass that Kansas has been successful with this year. Chip Hilly tries to get the seam pattern to Matt Gay. And Greg Thomas makes a nice break in the ball. And Thomas, because of his size, is going to have an advantage when it's a toss-up situation. Greg Thomas, an excellent leaper, good anticipation on that pass. Third and eight. Kansas with the ball at its own 32-yard line. Sands. And he picks up another first down and a little more. Finally tripped up by Greg Thomas. 
up at the 46-yard line. Well, we've talked about Tony Sands. At 5'9", he's able to hide behind some big backs. And this is just a simple draw play. Joel Steed will get off his block quickly, but because of the footing, unable to make that quick move. And Tony Sands, the low center of gravity, allows him to keep his balance and picks up enough yards for the first down. You take a look at it, Sands with 3,288 yards. That's during the course of his career. He is in first place in that category at Kansas. First down for KU. That pass complete to Kenny Drayton, their leading receiver, and he's across midfield. Down to about the Buffs 44-yard line. Ted Johnson and Deion Figures on the coverage. Kenny Drayton caught a touchdown pass last year in Lawrence against the Buffs. Just releases inside. Deion Figures wants to funnel that receiver inside. Did a pretty good job, but it's a particular play that's called against the perfect defense that time. Drayton with 28 catches, a decent average, and he is the guy Hillary likes to go to. He's a heck of an athlete. He also jumps the high jump for the KU track team, and his best is 6 feet 10 inches. That's what you call getting up there. It's an honorable mention, all Big 8 player. Bill McCartney was concerned about this football game, not so much coming off the disappointing way they played in Stillwater, but because he feels Kansas is the most improved team in the Big A Conference. It's a team that Glenn Mason has worked with the last few years, and they're a very similar team, at least in this situation, to Colorado back in 85. They got a chance to go to their first bowl game in 10 years. In 85, when CU went to the Freedom Bowl, that was their first in eight years. Well, that last pass play just fell short of the first down, so it's second and one for Kansas on the Buffs 44. A light snow falling. This is Monty Cousins, another fullback. Boy, they're not afraid to use their, their kids back there. That's four running backs in the first three and a half minutes of this game that have run the ball already. And I think you want to get everybody in the game that you're going to play in this game because the longer somebody stands in the sideline and doesn't play, the harder it will be for him to come in the game in the second half because he'll be frozen. It's a good point. There are a lot of ways to keep warm. Probably the best way is to keep playing. You bet. So Kansas picks up the first down. They're at the Buffs 41. Hillary on the keep. Inside the 30. Down to the 28-yard line. Ronnie Bradford to tackle. Boy, Chip Hillary, you talked before, Dave, is very mobile. I'll tell you how mobile. He has scored 11 touchdowns running the ball this year, the quarterback. Well, he does a good job running the option, and they do an excellent job blocking. You can see Wolfork comes upfield to play the pitch, but they don't get the interior pursuit until Hillary picks up the first down. And Chip Hillary is a guy that can run. We mentioned 6'1", about 185 pounds. Got very quick feet for a man that size. He's a sports management major, and so far he's managing very well. He's got his Kansas team down to the Buffs 28-yard line. Another first down. This is Sands. Wrestled like a rodeo cattle down at the 24 by Greg Beaker. Well, it seems Greg Beaker so far has been on every play defensively as you take a look at Hillary. Trying to keep his hands warm. There's Beekert, the leading tackler on this CU team. He's averaging almost 12 tackles a game. Seems like he's got that many already. This is the 11th play of the Kansas drive. It's second and five. George White tries to get through a hole that's closed up very quickly by Joel Steed and Chad Brown. And give Greg Beekert credit for another tackle. And again, you see the speed less of this Colorado defense. I think most teams, if they're going to have any success at running the football, are better off running right at them because they're a lot like the Miamis and the Florida States and the Oklahomas. They've got great lateral speed from sideline to sideline. You don't make much when you try to run against, the, against this team wide. Third and three. This is Sands. Tripped up quickly. Maybe got one yard on the play. Once again, Steed and Beaker there to stop him. Well, we talked about the inability to run wide against this team and watch the penetration, which will knock Sands off the course. He had a tough time handling the football. Wolfork gets off a block. Beaker is there. 
but the Kansas Jayhawks truly have a weapon in Dan Eichlow. And he will be out here to attempt a 39-yard field goal. Eichloth, a 76 percenter on field goal attempts this year. Boy, what distance. And right down the middle. So Kansas takes the opening drive and gets three points out of it. A 13-play drive. We're going to take a break. There's the score. See you down three to nothing. It has a breathtaking shape. It has new overhead cam power and standard anti-lock brakes. Introducing the all-new Pontiac Grand Am. See your neighborhood Colorado Pontiac dealer. What's this 59 anytime? 59 anytime. It's breakfast, lunch, dinner, it's nap time too. Well, it's your time. Five times. And anytime we go. Time out. No, never. Is this one of those limited time times? No way. Here's your score with 9.02 to go in the first quarter. Kansas with a quick 3 to nothing lead. The fans rest appropriately for the weather today. It's about 35 degrees, snow on the ground, and a lot more snow to come, we hear. The weather forecast says it'll get a bit heavier coming through Denver in about a half hour to an hour from now. Eichloff kicking off. Charles Johnson and Chris Hudson back to field it. This is Hudson. From his own seven yard line and has room, but slips on his own at about the 28 yard line. Big hole there for Chris Hudson. If he'd have kept his feet, he could have gotten a few more yards out of that. All right, let's set up the CU offense for you. Of course, a quarterback, Hagan, the senior. James Hill is the fullback. Westbrook still filling in for Mark Henry, who was just coming off a knee injury at wing, at wing back. Lamont Warren with a bad shoulder will play today. Smith and Brown are the receivers. And the offensive line, a young bunch, but getting more and more experience as the season goes on. So the Buffs from their own 28. It's first and 10. And Hagen grabbed quickly. Gilbert Brown made the initial grab, and Kyle Moore got the tackle. Major Kansas defense off to a good start. The front line. Kyle Moore, Gilbert Brown, Dana Stubblefield, and Brian Christian. The linebackers, a couple of freshmen, Don Davis and Steve Harvey are in there. And your defensive backs, Vaughn, Hill, Friday, and Terry. A loss of five yards on that sack. So it'll be second and 15. James Hill gets the call, stays on his feet. Across the 30, they'll probably give it to him at the 32. Hassan Bailey, the tackle. But in conditions like this, the speed factor from time to time can really be negated. So the importance in the kicking game and who does the job up front with runs just like this. James Hill breaks one tackle, two tackles, and struggles into the secondary. You won't see a lot of, unless people slip and fall down, of breakaway runs. This is going to be a slug it out Hitch in the mouth, gain four or five yards kind of game. CU lines up three receivers wide, including tight end Sean Brown. A little miscommunication there between Hagen and the intended receiver, Michael Westbrook. That brings up fourth down for the Buffs. The punting unit comes on for the first time today.
And as usual, Mitch Berger will do the punting. He's averaging almost 40 yards a kick. And back to receive it for KU will be Charlie Bowen. He averages about six yards per return. Berger gets off a pretty good one. Bowen circled under it. Gets it across his own 25 up to the 28. We're going to take a break at Folsom. The buffs are down. Three zip. My house has got to be cozy. Close to work. And I don't plan to spend my weekends gardening. If we could buy a house today, oh, it's going to be us. <laughs> Someday I'm going to have a house with a bedroom for everyone and space just for me. Let a real estate professional show you how HUD homes can make owning easier and more affordable than you ever dreamed possible. They came to Colorado in search of riches. What they found was backbreaking work and dark, damp mines. But they stayed, scratching at the earth in search of a bonanza, hoping to instantly strike it rich. Today, it's a lot easier to strike it rich in an instant. Because with Bonanza Bonus from the Colorado Lottery, you can double the amount of money you win. Of course, you still have to scratch for it. Coordinator Bob Fellow, his unit did a pretty good job first time out today. Held CU without a first down. Right now it's Kansas offense on the field. Chip Hillary, the quarterback. Kansas set its own 28 yard line. First down. Tony Sands runs right into the pile. Gets nothing. Which isn't surprising because Kansas is right now is going against one of the best defenses in the country. Giving up just 12.4 points a game. That's seventh best in the nation. And it's a young defense. Most of these folks are going to be back next year with the exception of Joel Steed and Greg Thomas. You expect them to get better. Second and nine. Hillary on the option. George White takes the pitch up to about the 38-yard line. He'll be close to the first down. Eric Hamilton ran him out. Well, Kansas really is not an option team, and yet they've put this in their system the last couple of years to take advantage of a good running quarterback. Hillary, again, bounces it back far enough that the distance between he and White, he's able to make that pitch. White with a good catch a little behind him. If you've got a quarterback that reads the option and stretches the defense, you're going to be able to gain some yards if you block well up front. George White out of Allen, Texas. He's a very good handball player. KU giving us uh, a lot of looks, much like the CU offense. First down for KU. Up across the 40 to about the 41. Joel Steed and Greg Beaker. The tackle on the fullback, Roger Robin. See, the only thing missing in this game is natural grass. You've got the weather. You see Roger Robbins numbers for the year. You've got the weather. Now you need a little mud and gook and grass. And, I mean, if you get all that, that's what those folks would like to see. Then you'd have everything. It'd be perfect football weather. This guy doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if he cared, he wouldn't wear that hat. <laughs> Second and seven for Kansas. We're under six minutes to go in the first quarter. Hillary across the middle. Intercepted by Greg Thomas. Who is brought down at his own 43-yard line. Three players had their hands on that pass. Greg Thomas ended up with it. That play looked like it was developing in slow motion, didn't it? Well, not a good throw by Chip Hillary. Tries to fit it in on a crossing route, and this is cover. The ball goes off the hands. Now, Eric Hamilton has a chance. He can't quite catch it. That was after George White couldn't hang on to it. And a good job by Greg Thomas. You can see how slippery it is. That's a throw you just can't make. Nobody open. You got to pull it down and either throw it away or run with the football. 
So the Buffs with their best field position of the day so far at their own 43-yard line. Hagan, once again off the mark in between a couple of receiver, receivers, Christian Fourier and James Hill. Boy, he's got Sean Brown wide open. Had anybody blocked Dana Stubblefield, the defensive tackle. Stubblefield threw off the rhythm of the play, and he's one of the guys, number 71, on Kansas defensive front that Bill McCartney feels like is playing at an All-American level. Stubblefield has five sacks, excuse me, eight sacks so far this year. Second and ten for the Buffs. Pitch goes to Lamont Warren. He gets about nine yards out of it. Tim Hill ran him out of bounds. It's amazing to me that Lamont Warren is even playing today after a dislocated shoulder last week. Let's go down to the field for more on Warren from Mark McIntosh. Thank you, Les. Talking about that left shoulder, I talked to Dave Burton before the ball game. They have a harness around Warren's torso, which basically keeps that left arm real close to his body so it can't fly around and possibly, once again, dislocate that left shoulder. Back up to you guys. Third and two for the bus. They're in Kansas territory at the 48, and quickly, Darian Hagan pitches the ball, and James Hill is brought down. Well, it's not too cold out. Otherwise, you'd probably see a few more people wearing earmuffs and scarves. I think Hagen may be hurt on the play. He came out of last week's game with a left ankle sprain, and it's still tender. And this is not the type of field you want to play on when H you've got a bad ankle. Hagen goes right down after he hands off to James Hill. You can see his right leg gets pinned underneath the Kansas Jayhawk. That's number, not sure who that is, but Hagen is up and able to walk off the field. Well, Hagen's been banged up quite a bit this year. Fortunately for the Buffs, they've got Vance Joseph and Cordell Stewart, two very talented young men that can come in and take his place. Buffs are in a punting situation right now. Mitch Berger back to do the duties. Charlie Bowen will return it. Not a very good kick from Berger this time. The ball will bounce. And the bus will down it at the Kansas 17-yard line. We're going to take a break in Boulder. Kansas still with the lead, 3 to nothing. You! Yeah, made me love you. Come here, my You made me. The McDonald's Big Mac is irresistible. Add fries and a Coke, and so is the deal. The Extra Value Meal at McDonald's today. A great price for a great meal. Mmm, Big Mac sandwich, large fries, medium Coke, $2.99. Plus tax, prices may vary. You're gonna love it. The muscles of the neck, back, and legs run in a vertical direction. So Infinity stitched the seats of the Q45 the same way, making it more comfortable and driving less fatiguing. At first, you may not notice the luxury of something as small as a stitch, but to Infinity, what's important is that somewhere down the road, you will. Because you believe these trucks shouldn't carry a spare tire. Because up here, crisp tasting beer just comes naturally. Because when the whole gang gets together, there's no room for filling up. So reach for the silver bullet, the beer that won't weigh you down. Folsom Field, the game's sold out. Not a lot of people here because of the weather, and they're watching Kansas. Take a lead over CU early, three to nothing. Well, the big game in Tallahassee today is in the third quarter in Florida State. Number one ranked leads Miami, number two ranked, 13 to seven. Right here, right now, Monty Cousins 
on the carry with Kansas. Brian Diet and Joel Steed the tackle. Other games going on around the Big Eight. You see Nebraska leading Iowa State in Lincoln, ten to nothing. That game's still very early. Also today, Oklahoma State is at Oklahoma, and Missouri is at Kansas State. Don't worry about this. That's Mike Berry. I think Mike wants somebody to get cut off. <laughs> Tony Sands with the carry for KU up across the 25. I think it'll be a while before Mike Berry sees the air again. <laughs> ah, that's how coaches talk. They get excited on the sideline. Tony Sands, did you see, needs 58 yards rushing. You take a look, and we can't see the offensive line, but really that's the reason this year that Tony Sands has been so proficient. Good job blocking up front. Ashley Hempstead, Perez, Schmidt. M. Wally and Loniker, big guys, averaging about 282 pounds. They've really increased the strength and size of their offensive and defensive line. Third and one for Kansas. They're at their own 27. Hillary looks like he's trying to change the play. It took too they, long to do it. Yeah, referee is waving off the play and penalty flags on the field. Boy, that's costly on third and one. Dead ball foul. Delay on the offense. Right, it looked like he tried to change when he realized Colorado was in a goal line defense. You see Darian Hagan getting that right ankle strapped up again. Let's go down the sideline and Mark McIntosh has more. Mark? Well, as you said, Dave, he's getting a retape. It doesn't look like it's anything serious. He was talking to Dave Burden and the guy fell on top of him when he made the tackle and Darian's ankle got stuck in there. It doesn't appear to be anything serious, and I imagine he'll be back in possibly next time the Buffs get the ball. Back up to you. Third and six for the Jayhawks from their own 22. Very costly five-yard penalty. Hillary going deep. Intended for Kenny Drayton, but Hillary overthrew him. And Kansas will have to punt. Boy, that's why you have to have speed in the corner if you're going to play somebody like Kenny Drayton who can really run and then add to that, you gamble by bringing Greg Thomas on a safety blitz. Ronnie Bradford out there by himself and Drayton, although a couple of steps ahead of him, it had to be a perfect throw or a good throw to get in. The sophomore Dan Eichloff is their place kicker and their punter. And back to receive the kick, Rico Smith for CU. Smith with a chance to return across midfield and down to the Kansas 48 yard line. We do have a penalty flag down. A 36 yard punt by Eichloff. Vance Joseph is coming into the ball game to quarterback the buffs. While Darian Hagan gets worked on on the sideline. On the offense, decline, first down. Penalty goes against Kansas. The Buffs decline it. And the Buffs start with the ball in Kansas territory and a new quarterback. The sophomore out of Morero, Louisiana, Vance Joseph. Tell you what, he made the play of the game last week in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Fourth and 14, he scrambles. It looked like he'd almost cut a deal with the defense not to tackle him. And that play may have been a million five worth of uh, income to Colorado in a New Year's Day bowl as opposed to a bowl that was played out other than other time. Joseph, his first play from scrimmage, keeps it. And barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Stubblefield, the tackle. Another new ball player in the game for the Buffs is fullback Scott Phillips in for James Hill. McCartney more and more in the last few weeks rotating his fullbacks, Hill and Phillips. There's Hagan, and judging from the way he's walking right there, I don't know that he's going to come back anytime too soon. <laughs> Joseph lost a yard on that last play, so it's second and 11. A lot of time. Patient enough and finds Rico Smith inside the 35-yard line. Kyle Moore, the tackle. 
That's a first down for the Buffs. That's exactly what he was, too, patient. Vance Joseph rolls out. He wants Westbrook on a flag, but holds the football until the inside cut of Rico Smith opens up. And one thing Vance Joseph has that I don't think a lot of young quarterbacks have until they have sufficient playing time is poise. This kid looks like he's played for four years and is in his final year here at Colorado. The good news is he's got two more years left as a buff. Good job of hanging on to the football to the last minute. First down, the Buffs at the Kansas 34-yard line. Joseph turns it upfield. Cuts back down to the 20. A pickup of 14 yards. Guy Howard finally brought him down. Advanced Joseph is doing his best the last couple of weeks to make a statement, hey, we're going to be okay when Darian Hagan is gone. Breaks a couple of tackles, makes the right decision on the option. Vance Joseph, his older brother Mickey, a quarterback at Nebraska. And Vance Joseph has his eyes set on being the starting quarterback next year. It'll be an interesting battle between he and Cordell Stewart. Two very talented young men. First down at the 20-yard line for CU. This is Phillips. Gain of about one. Steve Harvey, the freshman, the tackle. We're under a minute 20 to go in the first quarter. A chilly, snowy first quarter in Boulder with Kansas leading this one three to nothing. In case you're wondering what that thing is out the back of his jersey there, <laughs> it's prevent any kind of neck injury, any kind of whiplash. Scott Phillips looks like he's got something alive underneath Phillips on his jersey, but that's not the case. It's not a goiter. <laughs> Under a minute to go. <laughs> you said it, not me. Second and nine. The pitch to Lamont Warren, who can't handle it, finally picks it up. Well, he looked like he almost got hurt there. Legs went one way, body went the other. Well, the pitch will be a little bit short as Joseph gets pressured early, and Warren has to bend all the way down. And again, in weather like this, you're going to put the ball on the ground. You can't help it. Of course, you see again how slippery it is on the field. Better not to try to make too many moves. Just run, point yourself in one direction, and hit it. Quite a few Buff fans showed up for this one. Game is sold out. I'd say there are about 20,000 empty seats right now. Third and eight for CU. Joseph almost dragged down from behind. Gets the pitch off to Warren. Who doesn't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. Tim Hill finally made the tackle. It's a fourth down situation for CU. They're down three zip. Imagine you are a dinosaur. And you're standing around one day talking to your friend, the woolly mammoth. And you say, hey, it's getting awful cold around here. And the woolly mammoth says, yeah, maybe we should have some blankets sent in from the hills. Let me borrow your phone. So you reach into your pocket, and then you think, hey, I'm a dinosaur. I don't have a cellular phone. Maybe I'll just go over here and lie in the mud until this cold snap passes. Man, it's cold. Even in these uncertain financial times, Bank Western has made investing simple and profitable with its Wait and CD. A federally insured Wait and CD guarantees high interest, even if rates should suddenly fall. But more importantly, if interest rates rise, you can withdraw your money and reinvest at the higher rate. A Wait and CD makes safe investing surprisingly simple. So when you want to bank safely and profitably, bank Western. The Coldstream Guards at the Denver Coliseum for one show only, November 17th. To charge tickets, call 893-4100. Presented by Robert Garner Center Attractions and News 4. Today's game is brought to you by Samsonite, by Grease Monkey, by State Farm Insurance, and by First Federal Bank. All proud companies for Colorado. And by Taco Bell. Jayhawks were fortunate here. They forced Colorado into a field goal situation, but watch, is this a face mask? Lamont Warren breaks a tackle right there. You can see his head dip down a little bit as Doug Terry reaches out with the right hand. That should have been a penalty and an inadvertent face mask does not get called. No, no flag, so it's fourth down for the Buffs, and Jim Harper is out to attempt a field goal. On the year so far, he is 7 for 12 in field goal attempts. 
He's had three of them blocked. He's got a steady snow blowing into his face. And also a slight wind. Long field goal on the year is 50 yards. This one will be a 36-yarder. And it's true. And the Buffs and Jim Harper tie up this ball game three to three. Well, I tell you, as a golfer, if you could draw the ball that way, you could make yourself a little money on the tour. That thing had a major league hook on it. I just cannot understand why they make it so difficult for a college field goal kicker and the angle they put him at. Take a look at this. This is what you call drawing the ball. Right to left. <laughs> and about five yards. Inside, you see Bill McCartney reacting to Jim Harper. That's got to be a confidence builder for Jim Harper, even though they win the game last week on a fake field goal attempt. You can see Kansas and Colorado tied at three. Harper needs to get some confidence and kick it. Here are your first quarter stats. Kansas dominating. Twice the total yards that CU had. But right now, the score is tied up at three. Back to the point I was making. In the pros, they put you in the middle of the field and say, go ahead and do it. In college, they give you that tough angle, and I just don't understand it. It should be easier on the college kids and harder for the pros. Well, but I tell you what, I, I don't think anybody would, would disagree with, with the notion that college football has a level of excitement that the pros cannot reach each and every Sunday. And I think by making it a tougher kick, you force some coaches to, as Bill McCartney did last week, to be more creative, to be more aggressive. And now the kick, even an extra point, is not a sure thing. Well, back to receive the kickoff will be George White and Charlie Bowen for KU. And Mitch Berger will do the kicking. Well, a little indecision, and the ball bounds into the end zone. So Kansas, once again, will start with it from its own 20. We're at the start of the second quarter. The game is all tied up 3 3. Well, this is one way to stay warm. Stay up on your feet and yell a lot. Glenn Mason, the coach of Kansas. He's in his fourth year here. A record of 8, 24, and 1. And his offense is on the field right now. Tony Sands. Gain of four, maybe five yards. Dion figures the tackle. Sands does a very good job of waiting for that opening, doesn't he? Well, and again, he's a guy that you like. He, he would be what most coaches would call a mutter. If you played in natural grass in conditions like this, Tony Sands would excel because he's got a low center of gravity, and he can make moves without using a lot of body movement, and thus he's not going to slip too many times. They call him Tuxedo Tony because when Kansas is playing at home, he likes to take a limousine to the game dressed in a tuxedo. Second and five for Kansas. Sands again with another nice hole and another Kansas first down. Greg Beekert and Ronnie Woolfork, the two linebackers on the stop. You want to play linebacker in the Big A Conference, watch number 19. Reacts, first a pass, then a run. Take the lead block on as he takes the fullback on, gets rid of him, and then hang on to anything in the opposite color. Greg Beekert. Already with 10 tackles today, he's averaging 12 a game on the year. Against Baylor, Beaker totaled 21 tackles. This is Hillary on first down, incomplete. The ball was tipped. The intended receiver, Matt Gay. <laughs> Chip Hillary, a junior out of Westerville, Ohio. Know what his real name is? Common name, John. His parents must have been fans of my three sons. Every time I hear Chip, I think of Chip Hilton. Remember that book, the series of books, Chip Hilton? No, the only Chip I remember is the one from my three sons. <laughs> one of Fred McMurray's sons. Hillary across the middle, complete to Robin, the fullback. Greg Thomas corrals him, but Robin is well into CU territory, down to the 44-yard line. 
Well, we talked about Hillary and the athlete he is. First, he drops the ball, has presence to pick it up, and then he finds Robbins on just a crossing route. And also, we've discussed the missed tackles. In weather like this, it's tougher to tackle. The advantage goes to the offensive player. You can see Greg Thomas has to rodeo Robbins down in Kansas with a big first down. Excuse me, that was Monty Cousins. Yeah, my mistake on that play. That was Monty Cousins, the fullback, the backup fullback. First down for Kansas. Sands once again into the CU backfield, down to the 31-yard line, and yet another Jayhawk first down. Greg Thomas and Dion figures the tackle, and when your defensive backs are making most of the tackles, you're in trouble. Well, this is a 14-yard game, but watch the movement of Tony Sands. Watch his body. I mean, he doesn't do a lot. He's picking those legs up, and he's running a straight line at a diagonal toward the sideline, runs over Dion Figures. Tony Sands is off to a terrific start here in Boulder. Kansas right now handling Colorado up front. The offensive line is taking control of the game. Sands very close to 1,000 yards on the season. First down, Sands again, another big hole. Down to the 20. Greg Thomas, the tackle once again. And the DBs have got to be saying, boys, what's going on up front there? He just reached 1,000 yards for his second 1,000-yard season. At Kansas, you see back in 89, he had over 1,100. He's quite a player. But he didn't play in snow one time at Fort Lauderdale. He also wrestled in high school and didn't lose a match his last two seasons. So you know, he's got great leverage. Cousins tries it up the middle, gets nowhere. Leonard Renfro made sure of that. Renfro didn't play last week. He sat out with a hamstring injury. Coming back strong this week. Is Darian Hagan still trying to shake off that sprained ankle? I don't know. Shaking his head. Usually when you shake your head and walk like that, you're saying, boy, I don't think I can make it. Second and 10 for KU. They're down to the CU 20-yard line. Hillary on the run. A nice move to the outside. Inside the 10, inside the 5, down to the 3-yard line. Boy, what an athlete this kid is. Yeah, we talked about him, and you're right. Kansas has an athlete playing quarterback. Hillary, nothing opens up. Watch him pick up his feet right here as Beaker tries to knock him down. Hillary realizes that the angle is not good. Jumps over a couple of buffs, and Kansas has a first and goal. And again, quarterbacks, when things break down, good athletes will run directly upfield, not try to make too many moves behind the line of scrimmage. Hillary with a big run. Well, he reminds you of another great Kansas quarterback who could run the ball, Bobby Douglas, who went on to a fine pro career. First and goal from the three. Sands, no room. Might have even been thrown for a one-yard loss. Chad Brown and Ronnie Woolfork, the two bookends at linebacker, close in on him. Take a look at the Kansas huddle, if you can, after this replay. Sands on the lead, really with nowhere to go. Good job of penetrating by Kansas. Beekert stuffs the fullback. Steed is there, and a host of others. The Kansas offensive line is mammoth. You see him break the, the huddle and walk to the line of scrimmage. They've got some men up front. A loss of one, so it's second and goal from the four. This time they try wide. Good blocking up front, and Sands gets in for the touchdown. Just a case of a senior running back exercising patience. Watch him think about cutting it up. Stretches, stretches, stretches right here. Nope, stretches there. Nope. Keep running toward the flag, then make the move. Broke the tackle of figures in Kansas with the first touchdown of the afternoon. The extra point attempt will be Dan Eichloff doing the kicking. He is 22 of 24 on the year. And that one is good. Make it 23 of 25. So Kansas, with 11.04 to go in the first half, Takes a 10 to 3 lead over CU. We'll be right back. It is one thing for a new car company to promise the highest standard of product quality, dealer service, 
and customer satisfaction. But quite another, when Infinity buyers agreed, the promise was kept. It is a measure of performance, and happily, one that is also equaled on the road. care how much their luggage weighs. But for now, there's the Samsonite Lightweight. It's 25% lighter than the average soft side suitcase. Because at least in the immediate future, the weight of the luggage you carry can still be a matter of some gravity. Samsonite. Our strengths are legendary. I think in ideal conditions, you'd see penetration by black jerseys when you have the power toss. But Sands catches it. Tough to get any kind of footing defensively, and thus power takes over and neutralizes speed. Sands, great patience, stretches out the defense, and the Jayhawks have a lead. Ten plays, 80 yards. Took him almost four minutes. Sands with the touchdown run. Kansas is up 10 to 3. This is a part of the game Bill McCartney is worried about for his CU buffs, the kickoff return game. Eric Mitchell fields it in the end zone and will not return it. McCartney's worried about it because it's ranked 100th in the nation. The Buffs are averaging just 16 yards a kickoff return. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you, Les. You might be able to see a staff member of the CU grounds crew trying to wipe the snow off the sideline markers. This is to help the officials. We had talked about earlier the intensity of the storm has picked up. The snow is starting to accumulate on the field. And they're trying to help the officials out and help them see what is a very faint sideline marker. Back up to you guys. Now we've got a thin white sheet of snow laying on the field right now. Kansas far out rushing the bus. Vance Joseph still at quarterback for CU. Darian Hagan on the sideline. He was hurt early. Joseph fumbles. The ball fall on, fell, fell on by a CU buff. The tight end, Sean Brown, quick enough to make that recovery. You're going to see the ball on the ground some today, especially in option football. Watch the block, if you can see it, from the right side of the screen by Rico Smith. Vance Joseph will come down the line, option the fullback, and then cut it up. Rico Smith from the right side will come in. Look at this block. Right. Now you can't see it. Joseph just let the ball go before he is even tackled. That was Gerald McBurrows on the hit, but Colorado very fortunate. Buffs got 17 yards out of that play. Flags down. I think they just gave up five of those 17. Dead ball foul. Illegal procedure on the offense. Take a look at it. See if we can see from the right side, number 86, Rico Smith. There's a good block by Westbrook. Smith will come in the bottom of the screen. There's the block that enables Vance Joseph to turn it up, and that ball just left his arms. In cold weather, especially when the weather is wet, tough to hang on to that football. The Nebraska game was cold, but it wasn't wet. So easier, I think, to hang on. Neither team had a turnover. First and 15. We've got less than 10 and a half minutes to go in this first half. Pitch to Warren. Reaches up across the 35-yard line. Call it a gain of three. Gerald McBurrows the stop. We talked about speed, how the weather would nullify the speed. Lamont Warren outside with Gerald McBurrows. If he makes McBurrows miss, he's going to pick up about 20 extra yards. But because of the conditions, just unable to make those kinds of moves. You see Florida State with a 16-7 lead over Miami. That's in the fourth quarter at Tallahassee. And CSU trying to end their season on a positive note. In Fort Collins, they lead the Lobos 14-0. Colorado State went into that game with a 3-7 and seven record. This is the season finale for the Rams. Right now, for the Buffs, it's second and 12. From their own 36. 
Joseph complete to Sean Brown. He's up to the 43 yard line. Well short of the first down however about four yards short of the first down. Doug Terry the tackle. Vance Joseph changed this play at the line of scrimmage because he saw the free safety actually the strong safety on the line of scrimmage. Sean Brown with the catch picks up a couple of additional yards. Brown has had a terrific year. Got great hands 21 catches averaging over 13 yards per catch and three touchdowns. He and Michael Westbrook came into this game the leading receivers with 21 apiece. Third and five. Lamont Warren gets the first down and spins his way across midfield. Chris Mamalanga finally wrote him out. And boy, this is a nifty bit of running here. A great job by Vance Joseph. Watch how quickly he has to make the read and get rid of the football. Boom. Lamont Warren with the catch. Watch the move. On a very tough surface, he breaks tackles. Lamont Warren pulling out of the arms of Brian Christian, the defensive end, and picks up the first down. Not many freshmen, true freshmen, come out of high school and play in their first year and are as strong as Lamont Warren. Talk about his speed and how he catches the ball, but this youngster has great strength, too, for being 18 years old. And a lot of guts. He got hurt last week against Oklahoma State and didn't return in the third quarter. The injured Kansas player is Wes Swinford, a linebacker out of Morrison, Oklahoma. He looks like he's done for the day. This is a rough field to play on today. Dave, who has the advantage on a field like this, the offense or the defense? It's tough to say. I think, I think the offense probably does because they know where they're going. The defense has to react, but also tough for the offense to hang on to the football. This is one you just have to line up and go after them, and you can't get too fancy in a field like this. First down from the Buffs at the Kansas 48-yard line. Lamont Warren. Looking to throw on the halfback option. Going deep. Charles Johnson. Touchdown, CU. Boy, I tell you, this is a great throw. It didn't look pretty, but Lamont Warren takes one right in the chops when he lets this ball go. Looks like a pass. Waits, waits. Let's it go, gets decked. This thing fluttered a bit, but Charles Johnson never stopped running. And 48 yards later, Colorado has a chance to tie the game. Harper is in for the extra point attempt. The holder is Robbie James. And this ball game is all tied up. The halfback option, Lamont Warren throws the ball 48 yards to Charles Johnson. 10 to 10, and we'll be right back. Can't decide whether to lease or buy? <gasps> Do both! Yes, with Gold Key Plus financing from your Jeep and Eagle dealer. Get a sporty Eagle Talon loaded with 16 valves, 135 horses, 5-speed transmission, air conditioning, power windows and locks, tilt wheel, and... <laughs> okay. And Eagle Talon is just $2.59 a month. <gasps> so, hurry to your Jeep and Eagle dealer for a hot new Eagle Talon at just $2.59 a month. It's a deal that'll leave you... <gasps> breathless. See your local Jeep Eagle dealer. There's something coming down from the Rockies, where the air is dry and cold, where cold, clear water runs off the ice and snow. A new beer called Coors Dry, double chilled to lock in the dry cold, then kept cold from the Rockies to your store to give you a finish as clean as ice. New Coors Dry, feel the chill. This is a play that normally you want to run to the right side. I think this may have thrown Kansas off just a little bit. You've got a right-handed 
thrower running downhill to the left. Now, Lamont Warren will take a shot from Steve Harvey after he lets it go. This thing well up into the air, and Charles Johnson just does a magnificent job of not giving up on the football. And an excellent catch as he outreaches Tim Hill for the touchdown. Another 80-yard drive, this one by Colorado. Five plays, 243 off the clock, and Lamont Warren, a 46-yard touchdown pass to CJ. Well, the weather is not inhibiting either team on offense. A lot of points on the board so far. Berger with the squib kick. Charlie Bowen touches it. He better do something with it right now. He downs it in the end zone. There's somebody who wants another trip back to Miami. I'll tell you today, I don't blame him. It'd be nice to be on the beach. Darian Hagan, we are told, just untaped his ankle. Going to put some ice on it or just leave it outdoors. <laughs> and his return is unknown. Well, if you're wondering why Lamont Warren was so effective throwing that ball for Bill McCartney's buffs, it beca it's because he was a quarterback as a senior in high school. 48-yard touchdown pass to Charles Johnson. Right now, Kansas on offense. The pass complete to George White. And he's up to the 30-yard line. That's first down yardage. Glenn Mason, what a job he's done building back this program. Got off to a 17-0 lead last week in Lawrence against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Had a 67-yard run call back. They were seemingly in control of the game before they just didn't do a good job defensively, didn't play the pitch well, and the Nebraska speed on offense really took over. Kansas ended up losing that game to Nebraska, 59-23. Under eight minutes to go, first half. Hillary looking for Drayton on the sideline, broken up by Dion Figures. And Kenny Drayton trying to run that outcut had to tiptoe about seven yards just to slow down. Going to be tough to run this cut. You see Dion Figures makes a nice break on the football. Figures is a guy that next year's senior campaign, I think, will be one of the top cornerbacks in the country. Has good size, very good speed, and he's been a standout player for four years. Yeah, Dion made some preseason All-American list this year. Very solid group of defensive backs for CU. Second and ten for Kansas. From their own 30-yard line. Three wide receivers in the game. Hillary wants it long. Broken up on the other side this time by Ronnie Bradford. Out of Adams City High School in Commerce City. Hillary takes pressure from Chad Brown. Throw this up, and it's actually right on target. Jim New and Ronnie Bradford both go for the football. We've had some fairly good throwing for the conditions here in the first half. Third and ten for Kansas. Ball game all tied up, 10 to 10. With a light snow falling. Good escape job by Hillary. And Chris Hudson puts a bang on him. Hillary ends up a few rows up in the stands. I mean, <laughs> a bang, a thud, a pop, a boom. Whatever you want to say, Hillary's saying nice tackle. That's all you can say after this one. Chip looks like he's going to get the first down. Hudson out of nowhere cracks him and sends him flying, sliding, I should say, out of bounds. Chris Hudson, the uh, redshirt freshman, another guy that's going to be around for three years, punt returner and just an all-around complete player. And leads this team in interceptions with four. Back to punt for KU is Dan Eichloff, the preseason All-American candidate. And Rico Smith will receive it for the Buffs. Ike Loff angles it towards the sideline and gets a nice bounce. And Smith's going to let it go out at the 20-yard line. So it's a 44-yard punt for that young man. A young man who didn't even start playing football until his junior year in high school. In fact, 
He didn't even move to the United States until 1984. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of KCNC and the National Broadcasting Company. It's intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or retransmission of this telecast without the express written consent of KCNC is prohibited. Vance Joseph, as we told you, in the ball game at quarterback for CU. Darian Hagan came out with an ankle injury in the first quarter. Right now we're in the second quarter, seven and a half minutes to go. The Buffs with the ball at their own 20. Joseph is dragged down from behind by the linebacker Hassan Bailey. Sometimes you have to guess, you have to gamble. Hassan Bailey from the weak side will come and chase Vance Joseph down the line. If he doesn't get there, Joseph and Warren have a two-on-one. Good job blocking up front by the Colorado Buffaloes and Hassan Bailey, who's been involved in the uh, Kansas track team for the last couple of years, and he started as a cornerback. He's got that kind of speed. Second and nine. Joseph complete to Brown over the middle. Sean Brown picks up about four yards on that play. It'll bring up third and five. Well, speaking of CU tight ends, Sean Embry will not be playing in the ballgame today for the Buffs. He's going to take a little time off from football to do some studying. A one-game hiatus, you might call it. Third and five. Joseph is sacked by a host of blue and crimson jerseys, among them Gilbert Brown and Dana Stubblefield, the two big defensive linemen. Boy, how'd you like to be underneath them, Dave? 305 pounds, Gilbert Brown, and 285 pounds, Dana Stubblefield. Not today. Too cold for that. You see Stubblefield just runs right through Clint Moore. But Bill McCartney, I don't think, was exaggerating when he said he voted for Stubblefield as the first-team All-American defensive tackle. Mitch Berger is back to punt from his own five-yard line. Just barely gets it away. Charlie Bowen once again lets it fall. And the Buffs get a nice roll down to the 32-yard line. That's a 50-yard punt for Mitch Berger without a return. We're going to take a break at Folsom. We're all tied up. accelerate from a standing start quite another at high speed infinity designed the q45 to do both with a variable valve timing system so advanced there is no compromise at any speed infinity has for the first time blurred the lines between luxury and performance imagine you're on your way to work and you're in your car and it's a small car, but that's okay, you know, because it gets good gas mileage. But then this guy in this great big car comes by, so whoa! And then he runs out of gas on the bridge. Now you're stuck in traffic. And today's the day you got that big presentation with graphs and things. But luckily you have a cellular phone. So you call the tow truck and you say, hey, tow truck, I got this guy in front of me. Get him out of here. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you back at Folsom Field. And while we were away, the CU cheerleading team had some fun in the snow. Spelling out the letters of the alma mater. Right now, Kansas with the ball. The score is tied 10 to 10. Jayhawks have it at their own 32-yard line. It's first and 10. Tony Sands. That time met head-on by Greg Beekert. 
And Eric Hamilton and Chad Brown, take your pick. And I'll tell you, Beaker, Hamilton, and Brown on the tackle, but Joel Steed actually made the play. That's what you have to have. You got penetration, and he forces Sands to bounce back, not let him run downhill on a straight line, but make him move a little bit and get the penetration to him. Beaker, Hamilton, and Brown. Sounds like a law firm. <laughs> it's second and 11 for Kansas. Under five minutes to go, second quarter. Hillary complete to Monty Cousins. He picked up about five yards. Ronnie Wolf forked the tackle. It'll bring up third down. Chip Hillary pilots the Jayhawks on the field and when he's not studying or playing football he pilots a plane he's pursuing a license to fly third and five Kansas has it on its own 37 four receivers in the game for Kansas right now Hillary had Drayton wide open but the pass was off the mark That'll bring up a punting situation for the Jayhawks. That time he looked like he just couldn't find his feet. Ball might have slipped out of his hands. I think the weather can get credit for that play. And plus Drayton can't get out of his break as quickly as he normally would in a dry field. It looked like Hillary anticipated him really busting out of that break and getting to the sideline. Mike Luff averaging 40 yards on his two punts today. Rico Smith is back to receive it. Nice high punt. Rico takes it at his own 15. And doesn't get very far. A punt of 46 yards. Zero on the return. We'll be with us tomorrow as the Broncos play probably the most crucial game of the season. They travel to Kansas City and take on the Chiefs to see who will be in first place in the AFC West. NBC and Channel 4 Sports will be there to bring you all the action. Kickoff is at 11 in the morning. It all starts tomorrow morning with Broncos Beat Sunday at 10 a.m., followed by NFL Live at 10.30. All of it right here on Channel 4, the home of the Broncos. Well, I wonder if we'll be able to fly out tonight for that trip to Kansas City. I don't know, but I certainly hope so. Either that or it's fill up the tank. We're going to need a lot of gas. There was a penalty mark on the play. I think Colorado was offsides. Kansas probably will decline. Yeah, not looking forward to that drive either. Can you drive in snow? Yeah, not very well, but I can drive in snow. <laughs> All right. Offside. Left hand. Got to decide who was where when I called this penalty. Well, we know half of it at least. Now all we need to know is who it's against. I think you're right, though. I think it was against Kansas. I thought initially he said Colorado. Evidently it is against Kansas. That's what I thought. I thought it was Colorado, and it may be enough for a first down if they... Offside on the defense. That's going to be very close to first down yardage. Bill McCartney not very happy about that call. Take a look at it. Tough to see from that angle who was offside. The penalty was thrown as the ball, or the flag was thrown as the ball was snapped. Offside. On the defense. First down. It is on CU. And it is a first down for Kansas. So the Jayhawks retain the ball. Sometimes when you try to take as much as the ball as you can, lining up in the stands, you'll, your helmet will be in the neutral zone. And I'm sure that's what was called. First and 10 from their own 43. Tony Sands. Up to midfield. Another flag on the field right now. Also a Kansas Jayhawk on the field. Well, you know, with that white jersey, he's hard to see. He's almost camouflaged. I think it's Hesley Hempstead, the left guard, offensive lineman for Kansas, who's down. 
is a freshman out of Upland, California. Holding on the offense from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, the flag goes against Kansas. And the Buffs are going to send them back a few yards. Hesley Hempstead is okay. Comes off the field running under his own power. So far on the day, Chip Hillary has completed four of 11 passes. Right now, he's staring at first and 17 from his own 37. George White up the middle, across the 40. John Knudsen and Greg Beaker at the tackles. I'll tell you, folks, it's getting harder and harder to see the down markers right now. So if we hesitate before we tell you where the ball is placed, that's because we can't see it very well. To heck with the down markers. I'm having trouble seeing the ball. This is when you want to run that uh, single wing, turn around pitch, and stick in the guy's belly, and everybody runs behind him like they used to in the old days. Second and ten. Tony Sands up the middle. Almost to the 50-yard line. John Knutson the tackle. Yeah, it's starting to come down a little heavier. And again, they told us this would happen today. Boy, a kid like Tony Sands from Fort Lauderdale probably never saw snow in his life until he went to college. That is the 40-yard line. I know you can't see it too well, but that's what it is. Right now, Kansas has the ball in its own 48. And Sands picks up the first down and more. Eric Hamilton tripped him up. George White on the carry. Excuse me. Well, Greg Beaker comes through on that play and takes on the fullback, but he doesn't get much help. And George White will read the block there on Beaker, cut inside, and Hamilton just gets an arm on him. Otherwise, he's off to the races. Kansas is down to the Buffs' 43-yard line. We're under two minutes to go in a tie game. Hillary has Drayton, Kenny Drayton, for another first down. To the Buffs' 30-yard line. That's Drayton's second reception on the day. Well, Kenny Drayton realizes the field conditions. Watch him gain control hitter Pattery's feet and then just settle down present a target for Chip Hillary and that throw is right on the money got to run under control on a field like this can't be running full speed long strides you'll be on your keister more than you're standing up that's why a pattern like he just ran where he faked going long and stopped on a dime worked he lost the defensive back this is Roger Robin the fullback for another first down Greg Thomas the tackle Boy, they're picking up 10, 12 yards every play on this drive. Well, this team went on the road early in the season and went to Virginia and really played the Cavaliers off their feet before losing, but statistically dominated the game, and that's what you look at. Robbins on a nice block up front by Hensley Hempstead cuts back and gets into the secondary before anybody knows it. First down. This is Robin again. Down to the five. Another 13 yards on that play before Thomas and Hamilton make the stop. Well, the one thing you're seeing, the big backs are carrying the brunt of the work for the Jayhawks. Monty Cousins, 225 pounds, Robin about 220. They're breaking arm tackles and really doing a good job on this drive. Some scores from around the country. The heavyweight matchup, Florida State beating Miami in the fourth quarter, 16 to 10. Colorado State in its season finale. Up in Fort Collins, beating New Mexico 14 to 13. You might notice there, the only yard line that's being shoveled off consistently is the goal line. And right now, Kansas is just a few yards away, five yards away from putting up another score. A minute eight to go in the first half. 
We're tied up at 10. And you have to give Kansas a lot of credit with the way they played here in the first half. This is a team that understands that there is a bull on the line. Chip Hillary has had a terrific first half. He's completed enough throws and made enough runs that he has not allowed Colorado defensively just to stack up in there and play the run. Then when you spread out, you hit him with those big backs and Tony Sands, and Kansas has had great yardage in the first half. First and goal from the five. Kansas came in here with a five and four record and making a lot of noise today. Tony Sands. Is he in? Well, probably a few inches short here. Chad Brown kept him short. Ball is placed at about the one-yard line. Sands will get behind Roger Robin. You see Chad Brown get off the block and is right there. Beaker fought through a block as well, but they are close. Hillary tries it himself, but can't find the footing. Stood up quickly. Ted Johnson in on the tackle. Kansas is calling a timeout. It's first time out of the half. With 31 seconds to go. I'm amazed at how many people are actually in the stands. There he is. The most important man in Folsom Field, at least right now. The goal line shoveler. The way it's snowing, he's going to be a busy man here this afternoon. You'll need him about every four or five minutes. Kansas with 184 yards rushing. We're in the first half. Colorado has 50, and the Jayhawks had 15 first downs. You know, normally, CU gives up a whole ball game, just 138 yards rushing. Kansas has already exceeded that by almost 50 yards. Well, Kansas, on an average game, rushes for 217 yards. So we've seen uh, the Jayhawks here this afternoon really come out and take it to Colorado. CU just took its first time out of the half. Situation is Kansas sitting at the one yard line. It's second and goal from the one. Sunday nights are your sports nights on Channel 4. Immediately following the News 4 Late Edition at 10.35, it's the Bill McCartney Show with our very own Dave Logan. They'll bring you all the highlights and analysis of today's game, along with a complete look at Colorado's bowl future. Then it's Sports Extra with Gary Miller. Join Gary and his guest, Rocky Mountain News college football writer Randy Holtz. They'll talk about a number of things, including the CU Bowl picture and the Heisman Trophy. They'll give you all the lowdown on that and a lot of other things and it all starts at 10:35 this Sunday night following the news for late edition you hear the cheers because the CU defense is coming back onto the field 31 seconds to go in the half Kansas third down and goal from the one Play is stopped. Hillary kept the ball. I'll tell you what, he wanted to bootleg that. He had the whole right side open. But a penalty flag stops the play. I think Kansas may have jumped right before the ball was snapped. Colorado, I know, did, but I thought a Jayhawk might have moved first. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Watch the left guard, number 66. Does he flinch? Yes, he does. You can see Brian Diet moves, but you can move as a defensive lineman. As an offensive lineman, once you get in a three-point stance, you're glued there until the ball snap. Pretty good break for the Buffs because the ball is moved back. Back to the six-yard line. What are your penalties so far today? 
Third and goal from the six for Kansas. Good pass rush. Ronnie Wolfork in. Greg Thomas helped out. And Kansas will have to settle for a field goal at that point. At one time at the one-yard line. Mike Hankowitz, the defensive coordinator for the Buffs, just sold out here. They bring everybody. Beekert up the middle. Thomas on the right side. Here comes Wolfork outside, forcing Hillary to turn back with the footing and the conditions. Not enough time to really maneuver in the pocket. An excellent call by the CU defense. And now what looked to be a certain score of some kind turns out to be a rather lengthy field goal in this weather. It's going to be a 32-yarder, I believe. Miami, by the way, has taken a 17-16 lead over Florida State in Tallahassee. That's in the fourth quarter. And CU's bowl possibilities very probably hinge on that game down in Tallahassee. Florida State wins that game against Miami. The Buffs very well might end up in the Cotton Bowl. If Miami wins, looks like the Buffs could end up in the Blockbuster Bowl. Representatives from both the Cotton and the Blockbuster are here today to scout CU. Well, you can see the Kansas players, particularly the holder and the kicker, Dan Eichloff, cleaning off the field where they're going to make this field goal attempt from. And we believe it'll be a 33, 34 yard field goal attempt. There are three seconds left in the half. The score is tied 10 to 10. And another timeout on the field taken by CU. They're trying to ice the kicker, Dan Eichloff, but in this condition, I, I think he's iced already. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Yeah, Les, you can see Joel Steed leaving the field right now. He has sprained his left foot. We'll try to get an update from Dave Burton. I think uh, as a precaution, he's going into the locker room early. We'll see whether or not he'll come back out for the second half. And that would be quite a blow. The Big Eight's best nose tackle, Joel Steed, coming out. Well, you see the stars and stripes showing you a bit of a wind blowing. And it will be blowing in Eichloff's favor when he attempts this field goal. Darian Hagen also limping off the field into the locker room for the halftime. He came out in the first quarter with an ankle injury. Eichloff warming up into the net. Now Glenn says, hey, forget kicking on the sideline. Get out there and kick on the field. He's the best kicker in the Big Eight. And he's only a sophomore. 32 of 42 in his career. And you don't want to get involved in a kicking duel against Kansas, not with Dan Eichler. And Colorado takes another timeout. So both teams now out of timeouts. Three seconds left in the half. And boy, that offsides on the fourth down. The Kansas punt really has come back to haunt the Buffs. Be sure to join Dan Reeves and me each Monday evening at 6.30 for the Dan Reeves Show. This Monday, the coach and I will talk extensively about that game in Kansas City scheduled for tomorrow. We'll analyze the plays, what won or possibly lost the game. And as always, we'll have a special player guest, as well as a question for Dan from our mystery guest. That's the Dan Reeves Show, Mondays at 6.30, only on Channel 4, the home of the Broncos. Well, Dan Eichloff has had to wait about five minutes throughout all these timeouts. He's going to attempt a 32-yard field goal. With a slight wind at his back. The kick is no good. It's wide to the right. The field goal attempt by Eichloff wide to the right. We will go into the locker room tied 10 to 10. Kansas putting up twice the fight in the final home game for the CU seniors. Dan Eichloff doesn't miss many, but then again, he doesn't have to kick in the snow all that much. 
All right, let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh has someone to talk to. Mark? Yeah, we're talking to Bill McCartney. He dodged a bullet there at the end. Well, they've outplayed us. There's no question about it. They've controlled line scrimmage on both sides of the ball, and we're going to have to play a lot better if we expect to win. I feel very fortunate to be off at 10 to 10. Yeah, they have almost uh, 180 yards rushing first half. Yeah, we got to play a lot better. Bill McCartney, he's going to go in and tell his team that, I'm sure, but they've got to try to shut down this Kansas offense that's moving the ball consistently down the field. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark, and thank you, Coach Mack, and we'll take a break. Tied up at 10. In the art of making beer, no one has explored the essence of refreshment like Coors. And now we've discovered a way to double chill a beer, to lock in the refreshing dry cold of the Rockies. The result is a unique cold sensation and a finish as clean as ice. Introducing double chilled Coors Dry. Only Coors does it. Coors Dry has it, cold from the start, clean to the finish. Coors Dry, feel the chill. deals on America's favorite trucks. You want a sleeker, more aerodynamic design on the F-150? You've got it. You want a more comfortable interior? You've got it. You want it loaded? You've got it. You demand value? No problem. We made Ford Truck Month bigger and better than ever before, and you still want more? Okay, you've got it. Introducing a huge selection of F-Series Super Cabs only during Truck Month at your Ford dealer. Take it easy like a smile in the sun. Oh, so easy. I love to have my fun. It's easy. It's easy to be downtown with an Easy Streets token. Because every time you spend $20 with a participating store or restaurant, you'll get a token that's good for $1 off parking lots, bus, or cab fare. Downtown's easy with Easy Streets. It's easy. Oh, so easy. <laughs> Go, Buzz! We're at halftime. Kansas and Colorado all tied up at 10. It's snowing pretty heavily here in Boulder. Let's go down to Denver now for an update from the Storm Center and our Marty Coniglio. Marty? Hey, thank you, Les. We've got a lot of snow going on all over eastern Colorado, and you guys don't look for it to let up anytime soon. It's going to keep snowing there all day. Let's take a look around the region. We'll start off with two city camp shots for you. The first from Stapleton Airport. Things are all, we'll go to mountain camp first off. It has started snowing fairly heavily up there during the course of the day at Stapleton Airport. Traffic has slowed 45 minutes. That's as of noon. We expect those delays to grow as the day goes on. Lyman weather radar is indicating snow as we see it up in the mountains. We've got it from Burlington to Lamar, La Hanna, all the way back to Colorado Springs and Denver. There is lighter snow north that is not showing up. This is showing no sign of moving at this time. Weather graphics will show you some of the overnight snowfalls we had, up to 18 inches on Wolf Creek Pass, 11 inches at Kuchara. They've had a snowfall rate of 2 inches per hour, and most of the snow down south, but we will see our little bit of snow here along the front range as well. This is visibility. This will give you an idea of how far you can see. About a half mile is all throughout the front range all the way down to the southeast, so driving will be a problem with the snow and fog. We've got a winter storm warning out for the front range. Sangre de Cristos and southern foothills this afternoon. Snow advisories out. Northern central mountains in San Luis Valley. And then late tonight and tomorrow, winter storm warnings are out for the eastern plains and the Pikes Peak Palmer Divide area. So we're looking at a pretty wild night coming up here, Les, and it's going to keep going this way and snowing off and on. So you guys bundle up and have a good time. We're trying, Marty. We're trying. As the snow crew plows Folsom Field, you see the halftime score. We'll be right back. Dave Thomas is still traveling the world over looking for new foods for Wendy's. No, thanks. I just ate. Hi. 
boy, I sure could go for a big Dave's Deluxe. It's back. Made with a quarter pound of fresh beef, cheese, three strips of bacon, sauteed onions. The works. Hey, this isn't Piccadilly. Come in for another big Dave's Deluxe, only at Wendy's. There's no place like home. Go for size, not We don't mortgage. make enough. A mortgage is a mortgage. Let HUD set you straight. If everyone is offering you advice on buying your dream home. Let real estate pros help you buy a HUD home. They'll do everything from finding homes you can afford to doing the paperwork. And HUD pays their fees. Making a sports car, it seems mandatory to mention how fast it can go. Instead, why not mention the things you shouldn't mention about a sports car? A strong weld, over 24 safety features, all-wheel drive, engineering that endures. Still, if it's speed you want, we promise. With the Subaru SVX, you'll easily be able to go as fast as the law allows. Subaru, what to drive. Between you and me, this is my best value at 22 grand. The price of today's automobile is higher than ever before. I can get you into a 48-month payment plan, no problem. The right. terms of financing are longer than ever before. Let's go into my office. That's why regular oil and lubrication maintenance every 90 days at Grease Monkey is more important than ever before. 21.5. What do you say? Grease Monkey. Extending the life of your car. We could go 60 months on the payment. There's your halftime score at Folsom. Great day to be indoors. Maybe play a little hoops. For more on that, let's go down to the field to Mark McIntosh. Thank you, Lester. Stole my line. I was going to say, you know, with the snow coming down like that, it's a great day to be inside playing basketball. You know, the Buffs open their season a week from Monday at home against Towson State. And here's a preview of the 1991-92 Buffs. Last year, Colorado fans went wild over their basketball team. Joe Harrington's first squad ran, pressed, and scored its way to the NIT semifinals in New York. The stars of a year ago, center Sean Vandiver and guard Stevie Wise are gone, but the magic of last year hasn't been forgotten. The enthusiasm's there right now. I mean, in practice, everybody's playing hard and everybody's doing the right things. It's just if we can come together as a team, and I think that'll, that'll come because we got a lot of the young players, you know, have a lot of talent and they'll come in and play right away. Pancho Hodges, a junior college transfer, has to plug the gap at center. He's 6'9 and agile and should blend in well on Harrington's fast-paced attack. What I'm going to bring to this team is, you know, I'm trying to be a leader for the younger guys and just try to, uh, you know, just do what the coach needs so we can win, you know, whatever it takes for us to win. The cover didn't bear. Point guard Billy Law returns. His leadership should help youngsters like number 24 Donnie Boyce, a freshman who will play a lot. Joining Law in the backcourt, junior James Hunter, who was third a year ago in scoring, averaging 10 a game. The preseason polls haven't been kind to Colorado. The Buffs are picked to finish dead last. But then again, that was the story last year, and the team proved the experts wrong. Rankings really don't mean nothing to me. Uh, off of my mind, that's how you go out and play, how you price every day and go out and play in the game, the right attitude you have. And I think our team has the right attitude to go out. We've got the winning attitude, and I think we'll go out and do very well. It would be key for him to have a good season this year. And we're joined right now by the coach, Joe Harrington. You've had about a month to look at some of these new guys. How are they doing so far? We progressed nicely. Uh, we did some good things in our scrimmage, uh, our game last week against the Russian team. And uh, we, we need to improve a lot more before this uh, game against Towson State. What specifically do you guys need to do better? Defense. Pick up our intensity. Towson State's a, a very, very good basketball team. They've been in two NCAA playoffs, and they're a veteran team. Now, you talk run, press, and score. You can be able to do more of that this year as you've had more athletes that you've recruited come into the system? We should be good at it. Uh, it we've got to learn the system. It's new to most of our players, so uh, it's just something you can't say, well, now we can do it. We've got better athletes, but uh, it'll take some time, but we can do it. You have one more exhibition game. I guess that's Monday night against Fort Sill. Right, 7.05, and uh, we need one more. All right, Joe, thanks a lot. Right. Good luck this year. Thanks. Joe Harrington on the bus. Of course, you can see them Monday night, and then a week from Monday, their first regular season home game. Back up to you, Les. Hey, thanks, Mark. A little look at the CU basketball team. That's what the football team is doing, tied with Kansas. 10 to 10. We'll take a break.
You know how it goes. Sometimes it seems that if it wasn't for bad luck, you wouldn't have any luck at all. Well, if you've been having one of those unlucky days, or weeks, or even months, look at it this way. Your luck has got to change sometime. So play lotto. Because you do. It has a breathtaking shape. It has new overhead cam power and standard anti-lock brakes. Introducing the all-new Pontiac Grand Am. See your neighborhood Colorado Pontiac dealer. delivery for the new Meat Lovers Pizza with 25% more meat toppings than before. Get one medium for $8.99 and a second for just four bucks more. Gonna change the Pizza Hut delivery. Pizza Hut delivery, making it great. In the spirit of the Olympic Games, the Postal Service would like to present... Two! 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 Two-day priority mail. Two! That's delivery in just two days of up to two pounds, which is $2.90. Two! Remember. Two! Two days. Two! Two pounds. Two! Two ninety. Two! 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 Two-day priority mail from your Postal Service. We deliver for you. Official sponsor of the 1992 Olympic Games. We're at halftime at Folsom Field. There's your score. Buffs and Jayhawks tied at 10 apiece. And we just got a score in from Tallahassee, Florida with 10 seconds to go. Miami leading Florida State 17 to 16. That would be an upset, and it would also impact where your team goes to a ball game. Bill Marold, athletic director at CU. If that score holds, Miami beating Florida State, what does that mean for the Buffs? Well, if that score holds and we win today and next week, uh, and Nebraska wins, then that means that we'll go to the Blockbuster Bowl in Fort Lauderdale. That's December 28th, I believe. That's right. Night game? Uh, it is a night game. It's, you know, it's a great stadium down there. You've been there, so it'd be a terrific experience for us. Yeah, personally, I believe Joe Robbie Stadium, where the Miami Dolphins play, is possibly the best football stadium in the country. Are you happy with that setup? Because I know Bill McCartney had said he'd prefer a New Year's Day game. Yeah, I think, you know, we've traditionally talked about bowl games in terms of New Year's. That's kind of the history, and, and uh, we really wanted that. But clearly, if we have the opportunity to play in the Blockbuster Bowl, we're excited about that, and we're happy with it. Uh, the money is good. The competition will be good, and it'll be a great experience. Who do you believe the competition will be in the Blockbuster? Well, it, if, uh, again, if this, if this score holds, uh, it, it, it will be the second-place team, which will be Colorado, uh, Colorado and... Uh, doesn't come to mind right now. Which conference? Um, I'm losing it. I, I Alabama, Tennessee. One, that's exactly right. Okay. Alabama. Alabama. Okay. Alabama, pretty good team. Top Alabama, ten ranked. Uh, Alabama's top ten ranked. It'd be a great team. Uh, again, Coach Mack has always wanted to play the best competition, and Alabama's a, uh, a great program and a great team. And that, again, there's still a lot of hy hypotheticals because we still have got to play the Nebraska-Oklahoma game next week, and we've still got a half here and, and, and a whole game next week as well. To give us some perspective, and let's not rule out the Orange Bowl, of course, because uh, CU could still win the Big 8 and go to the Orange Bowl. Tell me the payouts for the Orange Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, and the Blockbuster, and then maybe people will understand why you'd prefer a New Year's Day game. Right. Orange Bowl pays each team $4.2 million. Cotton Bowl pays each team $3.1 uh, Blockbuster is still 2.5 million, which is not bad. So any scenario plays itself out pretty well. And like you said, we still have a chance uh, if Oklahoma could beat Nebraska on the 29th, then, then we will go to the Orange Bowl. So we've still got a chance to three-peat and, and, and play uh, on New Year's Day against, sounds like, the Hurricanes. And let's keep in mind, if any Buffs fans are disappointed that, uh, that the Buffs might not be playing New Year's Day, the Blockbuster is turning into one of the high-profile games in the country, isn't it? it? Last year was the first year, and they had a uh, Penn State-Florida State matchup. It was a great game, big crowd, as you said, in a great stadium, a great setting. So... Uh, that would be that would be just about as good as it could be, really. All right, Bill Marolt, CU Athletic Director, here to join us at halftime at Folsom Field. So there's the bowl scenario, the possible bowl scenario for the Buffs if Miami holds on to beat Florida State. In the last we heard, there were 10 seconds left. 
We'll be right back. We're getting close to the second half kickoff. Say, have you ever seen one of these? It's First Federal Bank's new Visa checking card. Use it like a credit card, but it works like a check. Your charges are paid automatically from your First Federal checking account. When you get the new Visa checking card, you can get a new First Federal checking account and your first box of checks free. With all that and the new Visa checking card, why not make First Federal your bank? Since 1885, First Federal, Colorado's convenient consumer bank. I was in an accident a while back and tried taking care of it myself. You know, all that legal stuff. Thought I could save some money. Well, now things are a mess. And then a friend told me Goika Chia offers a free consultation and no attorney fees unless money's recovered. I wish I'd found out about that sooner. Goika Chia Law Offices. Accident and Injury Claims. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend the Safari van to any of my friends or family because I feel that it's a real quality product that was put together with a lot of pride. My GMC Safari van has been far and away the best vehicle I've ever owned. I can't say enough good things about the, the van. It's like they had me in mind when they built it. When you need to know about teenage problems, you need to know about Bethesda. Call the support line, 758-1123. Bethesda, first. Today's game is brought to you by your Denver area Honda dealers, by Coors, by Subway Sandwiches and Salads, by Kinko's, and by La Victoria Salsa. guys pick it up a lot of us like to go run in the mountains real early in the morning the teachers I've had at the University of Colorado all have one thing in common they're extremely committed to their field they have so much energy and and want to pass that on to their students I know in my environmental studies classes it's great to have an impact on undergraduates all right The snow is falling in Boulder, Colorado. CU Marching Band is just wrapping up its halftime presentation, and we're all tied up. CU in Kansas, 10 to 10. Let's take a look, Dave, at some first half highlights. Well, there were many. Kansas got on the scoreboard first. Dan Eichloff off their first drive, nails this thing, and the Jayhawks get off to the quick lead. It was 3-0 at that time. And Kansas continued. Had moved the ball much of the afternoon. The defense for the Buffs have made several big plays. Here a double deflection and Greg Thomas with the interception. This stops the Kansas drive and puts Colorado in pretty good field position. And the results in Colorado's field goal to Tim Jim Harper with a nice little bend to that one. And at that particular time, it was tied at three. Kansas came back and took a 10-3 lead. Tony Sands, who's had a remarkable first half, as has the Jayhawk offensive line, Gets past Dion Figures, and the Jayhawks had a seven-point lead. But Colorado came back on an option pass. Who would have thunk it in this weather? Good block up front by James Hill. Lamont Warren takes one in the cheek, but gets the pass off. And Charles Johnson, 48 yards on the touchdown catch. And that's the scoring for the first half. We're tied at 10. A couple of things to point out. Darian Hagan left after this play. Watch his right foot as it's rolled up on from behind. He has not played from that point on. I think Gilbert Brown, the defensive tackle, was the one that got Hagan, and his condition is unknown. And then Colorado less right before halftime came up with a big play. Kansas had it inside the one-yard line, but the Buffs on third down came with the blitz. Wolfork chases him into Greg Thomas, and the Jayhawks had to settle for a long field goal attempt, which was off, and thus the tie at 10. First time stats, all you have to do is go down four lines and you see total yards and you get a good idea of how Kansas is dominating offensively in the first half despite the tie score. Well, they've kept the ball almost 19 minutes and the astounding number there, yards rushing. Kansas 175 yards rushing in the first half. If that number gets up past 
if it gets to 300, I think Colorado is going to have a very tough time winning this football game. I don't think the Buffs can afford to let the Jayhawks run like that. 16 first downs to five for CU. Bill McCartney summed it up quite well. We've been outplayed at every phase of the game. We're lucky to be tied at 10. And to show you just how impressive that statistic is, 175 yards rushing for Kansas in the first half alone, the Buffs in a full game normally give up just 138 yards on the ground. Field is being plowed, but the snow's coming down heavier, so these guys can't plow it fast enough. Ralphie, with a little steam coming from his snout, tells you how cold it is. And amazingly enough, the scoreboard reads 0-0, meaning halftime is over, yet neither team is on the field yet. I guess they want to stay as warm as they can as long as they can. They're going to keep them back for a little while while they clear this field off. Get the trucks out here and the guys with the brooms and see if they can help the footing a bit. Let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh has something to tell us about. Mark? Thank you, Les. Do not expect to see Darian Hagen back in the second half. Talk to trainer Dave Burton. He said it's too sore. That right ankle is too sore. He will not go in the second half. Joel Steed, who sprained his left foot, they're going to try to go with Steed in the second half, but just have to see how he feels. And you are right, Dave. They did delay the start of the second half about five minutes so they could get this field, try to get some of the snow off this thing. But it's coming down so hard, it just, it's covering up with their plowing off. So just have to do it. Back up to you guys. Well, now, wait a second, Mark. If they've delayed halftime five minutes, then you have to do a little more talking to fill the time. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on down. What do you want to talk about? It's cold down here. My feet are getting colder. But uh, we're actually thinking about uh, building a snowman here on the sidelines in the second half. Uh, we got nothing better to do down here. Back up to you guys. <laughs> All right, thanks, Mark. Everybody awaiting the CU Buffs right now, and here they come back out onto the field to start the second half. Buffs come into the game with a 6-2-1 and one record in the conference. They are undefeated. Four wins, no losses. And one tie, that tie, of course, coming a couple of weeks ago against Nebraska, and the Buffs are tied with Nebraska at the top of the Big 8 Conference standings. The Orange Bowl berth still to be determined. I remember last week at halftime, Bill McCartney not being very vocal with his troops, telling them to go out and get the job done. They could do it. I would imagine that has not been the case this week against Kansas. We mentioned the Jayhawk offense, 238 yards total. CU offensively 124 yards, but 48 of those came on the Lamont Warren touchdown pass. So this has been a first half completely dominated by Kansas. Hopefully Ralphie has good footing as she turns the corner. Well, how would you like to be holding on to her if she were to slip? Hang on, Ralphie. See, that's how running backs should go. Nice and easy. Keep their feet underneath them. No slipping. Breaking a few tackles. And now the finish line in front of her. She sees the nice open door there. And Ralphie goes in for the score. <laughs> Job well done, fellas. Let's show you a few scores from around the nation. You've got the upset down in Tallahassee. Second ranked Miami beating Florida State 17 to 16. They talk about the Florida State kicking game. It cost them today. They miss a 35 yard field goal with under 30 seconds to go in that game. Maybe it just wasn't meant for Florida State coach Bobby Bowden to win a national championship. So many good teams, yet he falls short year after year. Nebraska beating Iowa State at the half, 24 to 6. Cornhuskers getting ready for the Sooners next Friday. Speaking of the Sooners, they lead Oklahoma State. That game is closer than most would have thought. That's in Norman without Cale Gundy. Oklahoma leading the Cowboys 7-0. And the final Big 8 game being played today, Kansas State at home beating Mizzou 10 to nothing. One game in the whack, Colorado State leading New Mexico in the second quarter in Fort Collins, 14 to 13. That'll be the final game for Mike Shepard as head coach of New Mexico. He's been fired. Let's go down to the field and get an injury update for you from Mark McIntosh. Well, actually, Les, I'm not going to update the injuries. I'm going to update what Bill McCartney had to say at halftime. Like Dave suspected, they closed the doors. Only players and, and coaches were in the locker room. Usually they have some recruits and some other people in there to get to listen to Max halftime speech, but not this week. I guess he had some uh, choice words for his ball club about their performance in the first half, and hopefully they'll bounce back and play better in the second. 
Oh, interesting story about the uh, the similarities between the two coaches today. Bill McCartney, for eight years, was an assistant coach in the Big Ten Conference under a legend, Bo Schembechler at Michigan. And Glenn Mason, the coach at Kansas, for eight years, was an assistant coach in the Big Ten under another legend, Woody Hayes, and then Earl Bruce, who's now at Colorado State. Kansas will be kicking off to start the second half. And back to receive for the Buffs, Chris Hudson and Charles Johnson. Ike Clough with a squibber. And the ball goes out of bounds. A penalty flag goes up. The Buffs have a few options here. And it looks like the option they will take is to have the ball at their own 35-yard line. Illegal procedure on the kicking team. Colorado elects to take the ball on the 35-yard line. Now, if they can only find it, the second half will be <laughs> underway. <laughs> it's like looking for gold. Folsom Field under the cover of snow. It's been doing this all day long. And, you know, I, I found this very, very hard to believe, but it is fact. The last time it snowed during a CU game in Boulder, 1979, it snowed before the game, and it has snowed after the game. Well, that's what they tell but, the recruits. Don't but, believe that for a minute. <laughs> they tell the kids from Florida and California it never snows, and then once they get them here, they got them. Not since 1979 has it snowed during a game in Boulder. Buffs start out running the ball. Lamont Warren doesn't get very far. That's because Guy Howard and Gilbert Brown were there to stop him. We've talked about the improvement Kansas has made offensively, but they're also a better defensive unit. They rank right behind Colorado in terms of yards given up on the ground in any game. Kansas allowing about 159 yards per game. The CU defense, to put it in perspective, as Les said, giving up 138. So they have made genuine strides both offensively and defensively. Well, Lamont Warren gained one yard on that last play, so it's second and nine. Vance Joseph keeps it on the option. Run out of bounds, close to the first down marker. Paul Friday ran him out. Vance Joseph, this time looking like he's wearing a three on his back, fakes to Hill. The penetration forces him to bounce it back, but he keeps running, keeps stretching the defense. The cornerback has to play the pitch man. That's Tim Hill. Joseph cuts right off his left hip, gets very close to first down yardage. It'll be third and two. Buffs with the ball at their own 43. That field right there looks like an Arthur Murray dance studio scenario. All of those footsteps on the floor. This is Lamont Warren again. Fumbles. Kansas acting as if they picked it up. And yes, they have. The Jayhawks recover the fumbles. Steve Harvey, the freshman out of Leavenworth, Kansas. We talked about before the telecast that turnovers in weather like this, because of the precipitation, probably would play a large role. Warren had first down yardage, but it's stripped. And you're going to see somebody's right hand, Lamont Warren, behind the block of James Hill, ducks inside. Harvey reaches in right there. The left arm drags the football out. Not only did he cause the fumble, but he covered the fumble as well. Harvey, a freshman, inside linebacker. What a great play. Reaches in with the left hand and knocks the ball away from Lamont Warren. Kansas with the ball. Tony Sands with the carry. And he's down to the CU 45-yard line. Call it a gain of three. Leonard Renfro the stop. Glenn Mason can smell an upset for Kansas. His team being scouted today by the Freedom Bowl. And the Jayhawks have been told if they can win one of their last two games and finish with a winning record, they might be invited to that bowl. Second and seven. Hillary over the middle. Complete. Dwayne Chandler in for the score. The tight end. Dwayne Chandler puts Kansas back on top. Dwayne Chandler caught his first touchdown pass last week against Nebraska on this very same play. Drop back pass. This ball, I don't know how he fit it in there. I don't think Chandler saw it until the last minute. Holy moly. Stuck his hands out, and the ball just kind of stayed right there. 
Dwayne Chandler, 45-yard touchdown reception. A great throw by Hillary. Maybe we can see it again after the kick. I don't think Chandler ever saw the ball coming. He had no idea the ball was coming until he quickly turned back and it happened to be in his hands. Eichloff with the extra point attempt. The holder is his quarterback, Hillary. And he's got it. Kansas quickly jumping back on top to begin the second half. The Jayhawks lead it, 17 to 10. Prices are low at Subway, but I'd rather focus on sandwiches. People call them hoagies or heroes or submarines because they're shaped like submarines, but we call them Subway sandwiches. Our six inch meatball sub features meatballs and sauce on bread I just baked all for a low economical price. I won't say how low, but you'll probably find enough in the cushions of your couch. <laughs> for 25 years, Subway has quietly made some of the best sandwiches anywhere. Like the six inch meatball sub, only $1.69, only at Subway. This picante sauce says it's better than the salsa made in New York City. They don't say hi, it stacks up against La Victoria. I wonder why. I wonder if it's cause La Victoria uses fresh tomatoes, peppers, and onions. I wonder if it's cause La Victoria has always made thick, chunky salsa. I wonder if it's cause La Victoria flat out tastes better. Mmm, that's it. More and more people are switching to La Victoria. No wonder. The Accord, hands down. No other car comes close. Safety sold me. The Accord has a driver's side airbag, standard. I bought Accord for its great resale value. It's the best. The competition can't touch it. For the money, it's the best. The Honda Accord. Still the best value for the money. I got my Your neighborhood Honda dealer. Frontier Longmont, John Elway, Mile High, Classic, Empire, Fisher, and Ralph Shomp. First play after the turnover, Chip Hillary will go inside, watch the catch, and tell me if you think he saw this ball coming. The ball hit his left wrist, and yet he was able to hang on. An excellent job by Dwayne Chandler. And Kansas, once again, has taken the lead. Two plays, 48 yards of the drive, not much time. From 45, Hillary to Chandler. Dan Eichloff to kick off for Kansas, and once again, back to receive it for the Buffs. Charles Johnson and Chris Hudson back at the goal line. Quiver right off the face of Kent Call. The ball is up for grabs. Does Kansas have it again? Yes. Eichloff with a screaming line drive on the kickoff went off the helmet of Kent Call and Kansas recovers its second fumble in the last three plays. I don't think I've ever seen that happen. King Dixon with the recovery, and you're right, this ball it was like a Hoyt Wilhelm knuckleball. Eichloff kicked it, and it hit Kent Call right in the helmet. Watch the ball. Off Call's head. Wolfork tries to get it. Ronnie can't come up with it. And Kansas with the second big turnover here in the second half. And the ball on the CU 35-yard line. Tony Sands gets the call. Picks up a couple yards. Diet and Ted Johnson the tackle. Well, Freedom Bowl officials are now gleefully running up and down the press box here at Folsom Field, while Blockbuster and Orange Bowl officials have probably buried their head. Kansas trying to pull off a huge upset. Colorado defensively is going to have to make a stand here if they want to keep touch in this game. Second and seven. This is the fullback, Roger Robin. And he's close to first down yardage. Diet and Chad Brown the tackle that time. Officials take a timeout. They want to measure this. See Darian Hagen done for the afternoon. This young lady, no doubt a Buff fan, the way she looks concerned. Very, very close.
inches to go for the first down for Kansas. Four or five inches short. So it'll be third. Third and inches. From the CU 25 yard line, Hillary, and he's got it. Kansas with a first down inside the CU 25. This drive started as a result of the kickoff being fumbled by Colorado. The ball, right portion of the screen, hits Kent Call right in the head. A knuckleball, and it obviously fooled him. Ronnie Wolfork tries to catch it almost like a rebound. He can't do it. Then, of course, the field becomes a factor. The Jayhawks get on the football, and the drive continues. The pitch to Sands, met head-on by Eric Hamilton. Good job that time by the Colorado defense. I mean, usually when you start to lose grasp of a game, the defense is what has to play. You can see the pitch forced a little early by Wolfwork. Hamilton there, and then Brian Diet finishes off the running back. Buffs hold Sands to no yards on that play. So it'll be second and ten. We're at the start of the second half. The Buffs have already fumbled the ball twice to open this half. George White the carry. He's hit quickly by Diet. Well, the crowd's still hanging on. Considering the weather, pretty good crowd. The game has been sold out, but about 20,000 seats were empty to begin it. Third and nine for Kansas. Hillary looking to the corner and Drayton. Touchdown, Kansas! There was contact at about the one-yard line. So we waited to see if there were any flags on the field. But no. And Kansas with a two-touchdown lead now. Tell you, this is a fantastic catch by Kenny Drayton. Chris Hudson, the bump and run, he didn't get a piece of him and allowed Drayton to get off cleanly. And then a good job by Drayton. He slowed down, drew the contact, and then that would separate him enough to catch the football. That's a senior making a play against a freshman, a guy that's been around for a while. Kenny Drayton has had several big catches during the course of his career. Had a touchdown, as we mentioned, last year against Colorado. He's got one this year. Eichlaw converts the extra point. And the folks here at Folsom are stunned. Kansas now with a 24-10 lead. Kenny Drayton with the touchdown catch. A great job. Hillary is going to Drayton all the way. Hudson lined up a little bit too far inside. He allowed the release too easily. Drayton slowed down. The contact came. When you're bumped, you obviously are going to separate from whoever hits you. Drayton, good concentration to make the catch in Kansas with a two-touchdown lead. And the few Kansas fans that are on hand are very, very happy about that last play. Well, there's an unhappy bunch right there, the CU sideline. You know, we had Bill Merolt on at halftime, the CU athletic director, and we were talking about the Orange Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Blockbuster Bowl. They might not go to any of those if they lose this game or if they lose next week at Iowa State. Take a look. See the contact there? The contact, Hudson goes down, and Drayton's able to stay up long enough to keep his eyes focused on the football. Great concentration. Nice job. Nice yeah. job of staying right with the ball and the catch. Well, the turnovers have killed the buffs. We've only played three minutes and change in the second half. The buffs have fumbled it twice, and Kansas has converted it into touchdowns each time. Charles Johnson and Eric Mitchell back to receive the kickoff. This is Johnson.
And another fumble. Does Kansas have the ball again? Or are they calling Johnson down? Kansas has the ball again. This is incredible. Don Davis falls on it this time. You got to understand, in this kind of weather, you must protect the football. Charles Johnson breaks the tackle. Watch a Kansas Jayhawk come with the right hand and strip him there. The ball will bounce out. Good job by the Jayhawk. That's number 40, King Dixon, again. Right there with the right arm, the ball is loose. Correct call, the Jayhawks with the third fumble recovery of the second half. And this time, Kansas has it at the CU 39. The first man through is Roger Robin, the fullback. Not much. I'll tell you, if I'm Glenn Mason here, I'm very careful in this drive. Because I know I've got a good kicker, even in these conditions. If I can get myself three points and go up 17 points on this plane surface, I got to feel like I'm going to be tough to catch, and that's exactly what Bill McCartney's thinking. He's got to have zero points on this drive. His defense has got to hold right here. Glenn Mason is thinking, I need about 20 more yards, and I've got myself a 17-point lead. He's also thinking that if CU can fumble the ball three times in five minutes, we can too. You have to be careful in these conditions. Beekert and Hamilton. Tackle Sands there. Boy, the last time Colorado was 14 points behind here at Folsom Field it was all the way back to the first game of the year. Last year, they played the Stanford Cardinals. Stanford got off to an early 14-0 lead. Colorado came back to win it 24-21. It's been quite some time since they've been down like this at home. Third and four for Kansas. Sands hit quickly by Jeff Bruner, who is playing nose tackle in place of the injured Joel Steed. Jeff Bruner's a guy they've tried to find playing time for the entire year. Unfortunately, he plays behind an all-Big A player in Steed, but Joel is injured. Look how quickly Bruner beats the offensive lineman. And on his way to the quarterback, he happens to find Tony Sands with the football. And the CU defense got exactly what they had to have on that drive if they're going to stay in this game. Jeff Bruner, whenever he does come in for Joel Steed, usually plays very admirably. Eichloff punting the ball for Kansas. And Rico Smith will let it bound into the end zone. So the Buffs will get the ball at their own 20. Very important that they hold Kansas there and try to switch that momentum around. And this crowd is starting to come alive. We're going to take a break. Kansas leads the Buffs. On my first job back in the 60s, I traveled out west a lot. The only place original Coors was sold, which made me a very popular guy. Here's Steve swapping me his old stereo for a case. I think he took me. I used to bring Coors back in my trunk. It was like home delivery, fresh from the Rockies. Ta-da! After I got married, I changed jobs, but not beers. Hey, the best things in life never change. doing with their presentation we're ready when your department has to deliver call kinko's the copy center we take care of the copies so you can take care of business now you can get the highest quality copies in town delivered right to your door just call kinko's the copy center we pick up your originals and deliver clear quality copies directly to you no more traffic no more lines depend on kinko's we pick up and deliver checker parts ranger what's the matter son ever try to find parts for one of these haven't been to Checker lately, have you? No. Let me show you something. Today's Checker is a whole lot different. They've added, they've added thousands of parts, so no matter what you need, they've got it, or they'll get it. Sure sounds smooth now. At today's Checker, a new Icebreaker 1000 is just $59.88 after rebate. We got what you need. Yeah, you're reading it right. Third quarter. Kansas leading Colorado 24 to 10 and you see Darian Hagan on the sideline with an injured ankle and Vance Joseph in the game at quarterback for the Buffs. This is Lamont Warren. Might have been thrown for a loss there by Gilbert Brown and Doug Terry. Well if Colorado should lose this game of course they will not have any chance to go to the Orange Bowl and more than likely will not go to the Blockbuster Bowl. They'll probably be in Jacksonville Florida 
playing in the Gator Bowl. Haven't been to the Gator Bowl since 1972, but in terms of money lost, you see Vance Joseph, what he accomplished last week with his fourth and 14-yard scramble, you're going to lose that much money if they lose this game. Nebraska leading Iowa State big time. Vance Joseph runs into the referee, Terry Turlington, who takes a spill. Joseph finally gets off the pass to Michael Westbrook. And Michael gets it up to about the 46-yard line. What a weird play that was. I I'll tell you what happened on the play. Turlington got in Vance Joseph's way. Then he threw a nice block for Vance Joseph, but I think Vance stepped out of bounds, which is not going to be called. Joseph tries to elude the initial rush. Terry Turlington says, all right, I'll let me get out of here. But he's like, oh, got <laughs> run over. Now watch his right foot. If it hits that marker there, oh, he's out of bounds. He was about a yard out of bounds. The problem is Terry Turlington, the referee, would have been the guy to call that, but he was down on the ground. There is a flag down. I guess it's going to be against Colorado anyway. Illegal men downfield. You'd have to think that would be the case. Boy, Terry Turlington needs some overtime pay for that. That Kansas player just threw him right out of the way. Lots of problems now for Colorado, but when you're two scores down and the conditions continue to worsen, tough to get anything going, and you're playing an aroused defensive team. You see Kerry Turlington talking to Glenn Mason. I didn't mean to get in his way, Glenn. I was not trying to block for Vance Joseph. And then one of your boys ran me over. Bill McCartney is having a tough time finding any humor in this at all. Second quarter score, Penn State leads Notre Dame 21 to nothing. Hey, you think the Sugar still wants Notre Dame? Probably. Joseph on second and 15, going deep. Rico Smith. Now, I'll tell you what, a normal day, Rico could have stopped and come back for that ball and caught it. But with the snow on the ground, no way. That's what I mean. Tough to make big plays because big plays usually require a player to either make somebody miss or make an adjustment on a pass. And it's going to be impossible to do that this afternoon. Vastly improved Kansas State team looking at its sixth win of the year, beating Missouri. And there's the Penn State Notre Dame score Dave just told you about. Notre Dame beaten last week by Tennessee. It'll be a tough road to hoe coming back against a very good Penn State defense today. Third and 15 for the Buffs. 7.40 to go in the third quarter. Lamont Warren met quickly. Sylvester Wright making the play. Third and 15, tried to call something to be safe. Lamont Warren can't quite get past Sylvester Wright. 6'3 and 235-pound freshman. Mitch Berger backed up to his own one-yard line, about to punt it to Charlie Bowen. Berger gets one off well over Bowen's head. That one back to about the 26-yard line. A nice punt by Mitch Berger, and maybe that can turn the tide for CU. A 61-yard kick. Well, if nothing else, it allows Colorado to reestablish field position. They played the entire third quarter after fumbling a couple of kickoffs in their end. Now you can play in Kansas's end and possibly force a turnover of your own. I was just going to ask you, if you're Mike Hankwitz, CU defensive coordinator, do you try and make something happen here? Well, you want to keep them down. You want to pin them down in this end and allow your offense to work on a short field. Hillary on the option. Fumble, and the Buffs get that turnover. Greg Beekert fell on the ball. Right around the Kansas 30-yard line. Well, I got to think if Glenn Mason could have a second chance, he wouldn't have this play called. The option in this weather is going to be tough to execute. You can see Hillary hit by Hamilton, tries to get the ball to Sands. It was a good pitch. Tony Sands just had to go right through his hands. And Greg Beaker on top of it. And Colorado got exactly what they had to have. Greg Beaker, the junior out of Longmont, Colorado. And there he is. Beaker just a junior. 
second in the nation in tackles last year. He's the Buffs leading tackler this year. And the Buffs start with the ball on the Kansas 30-yard line. Lamont Warren. Some nice room up the middle. Good thing Lamont Warren does here. He puts two hands over the football. When he gets into traffic, that right arm comes down and clamps on top of the ball. You won't see a lot of fancy footwork here. You'll see people taking care of the football. Warren picked up eight yards on the play, so it's second and two. Turnovers obviously playing a huge part in this ballgame. Touchdown, Michael Westbrook. Well, what a great ball fake by Vance Joseph. I don't know if we can see it or not, but Vance Joseph makes a great play action fake and actually hides the football on his hip. Puts the ball behind him after the fake to Lamont Warren, steps up into the pocket. Good protection by James Hill on the blitz. And Michael Westbrook with a diving catch. A touchdown pass from Vance Joseph to Michael Westbrook, the freshman redshirt. And that brings out Jim Harper for the extra point attempt. This would put the Buffs within a touchdown of Kansas. And Harper nails it. So with less than six minutes to go in the third quarter, the Buffs back in this ballgame, down 24-17. With the new 92 Honda Accord LX, value standard equipment. Along with a driver's side airbag, air conditioning, power windows, power door locks, AM FM stereo cassette, cruise control, adjustable steering column, power antenna, dual power mirrors, and Michelin all-season radials. That leaves just one option left for you to decide. The color. The 92 Honda Accord LX, still the leader of the pack. Frontier Longmont, John Elway, Mile High, Classic, Empire, Fisher, Ralph Schomp. Prices are low at Subway, but I'd rather focus on sandwiches. People call them hoagies or heroes or submarines because they're shaped like submarines. But we call them Subway sandwiches. Our six-inch meatball sub features meatballs and sauce on bread I just baked, all for a low economical price. I won't say how low, but you'll probably find enough in the cushions of your couch. <laughs> for 25 years, Subway has quietly made some of the best sandwiches anywhere, like the six-inch meatball sub, only $1.69, only at Subway. This picante sauce says it's better than the salsa made in New York City. They don't say how it stacks up against La Victoria. I wonder why. I wonder if it's because La Victoria uses fresh tomatoes, peppers, and onions. I wonder if it's because La Victoria has always made thick, chunky salsa. I wonder if it's because La Victoria flat out tastes better. Mm. That's it. More and more people are switching to La Victoria. No wonder. Vance Joseph makes this play happen. He'll put the ball after the fake to Warren almost behind him. And the defensive secondary will lose sight of the football. Trust me on that, he did. Hassan Bailey knocks him down, but Vance Joseph with a touchdown throw. And Michael Westbrook in these conditions, that's a pretty good catch. Now, Dave, I'm not so sure when CU is behind. They might not be better off with Vance Joseph in the ballgame instead of Darian Hagan. Well, he's got a nice presence. You see the scoring drive after the fumble, two plays and 29 yards. Colorado down seven. He's got a good presence about him and a great touch. It was a nice touch pass, and that's what you have to have. Pittsburgher kicking it off. And no chance at a run back once again. And remember how aroused the Kansas defense was when Colorado offensively finally came on the field trailing 24 to 10, I would bet you will see black jerseys flying around the ball on this series. Kansas has to come out, be very basic, take care of the football, and try to get something going on offense. Take a look again, the play action fake. Watch Vance put this almost behind his back. Defense loses side of the football right there. That's a tremendous fake and that's all you need to get somebody open. Good job of shooting on that play by our camera folks. Chip Hillary on the run. Chad Brown runs him out. Call it a gain of one. 
Darius Holland now in the ball game for the Buffs at a defensive end spot. He's the freshman out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. Jayhawks need a first down here, even a couple of first downs. If they can't go further than that, give your punter enough room to kick into the Colorado end of the field. Second and nine for the Jayhawks. 5.20 to go, third quarter. They're on their own 21. Tony Sands brought down by that man, Holland. <laughs> the New Mexico Player of the Year in high school last year. Yeah, just another freshman. Get used to that name. We talked about him last week. You're going to hear a lot from Darius Holland in the next three years. 6'4 and 275 pounds. And quick as a cat. In high school, we understand he was so quick, he ran back punts. Who'd want to tackle him? Not me. Third and nine. The screen to George White. And another fumble. Ronnie Bradford. And it's CU ball. Ronnie Bradford picks up another Kansas fumble. Well, we talked about when the CU defense was down 24 to 10, the Jayhawks had it on the 30. Colorado had to make a stand. They did so, and now they've tried to take control of the game themselves. The ball is stripped from George White. Bradford picks it up. You'll see a defensive lineman come downfield. White, I think that's Marcellus Elder, number 97. Hustling downfield, knocks the ball away from George White, and the Buffs offense is in good business. From the 23-yard line, a fumble by Warren. Loose ball. <laughs> and CU recovers. Looks like the quarterback, Vance Joseph, fell on it. Boy, oh boy, where's the stick em when you need it? Well, it doesn't work in this weather, I can tell you, with this much precipitation. This much snow and wet field, it's almost impossible to hang on. Bill McCartney talking to his offensive coordinator, Gary Barnett. We probably told him, hey, he can't pitch right there. Just take the loss. We'll line up and run another play. Play it conservatively. This is second and 30. And Joseph is caught from behind by Dana Stubblefield. That's his ninth sack of the year. Stubblefield's been a great player for Kansas in his career. That time blew again right past the CU offensive line and no chance on the delayed play action fake for Vance Joseph to pick up anybody downfield. Now this drive for Colorado is going the wrong way. The Jayhawks just added to a sack total of 29 coming into this game. Pretty amazing when you consider they only had 19 all of last year. This is third and 30 yards to go. A good pass rush on Joseph again. Nobody near that pass. That brings up fourth down. The Buffs not in field goal range. They're going to have to punt the ball away. And just like the Colorado defense did a couple of series ago, Kansas comes up with a big stand. You let's see you score there even this game up, they've got the advantage as you head into the fourth quarter. Seems like it's getting harder and harder for these offenses to do anything. People having trouble finding their footing. The snow continues to fall. Berger with a nice high kick. Bowen is going to let it bounce into the end zone, and Kansas will have it at its own 20. 2.46 to go in the third quarter. Kansas leads this one. 24 to 17, some of the CU faithful hanging around for the conclusion of this one. I bet your lips might freeze to those uh, those horns, huh? I'd be singing too. Halftime of that Nebraska game when it was, what, about 19 degrees out? A little colder than that. The CU marching band couldn't even play at halftime because the spittle got caught in the horns and the horns wouldn't make a sound. <laughs> Kansas, Tony Sands picks up a four, maybe five yards on that play. Ted Johnson and Eric Hamilton, the tackle. 
You're seeing CU defensively start to take some chances. Watch how soon Greg Beekert appears in the backfield. Almost as soon as Tony Sands gets the football, Beekert takes out Roger Robin, and Sands has to make an adjustment on the lead. Call it second and seven for Kansas. George White. Not very far. And eventually brought down by Greg Thomas. We've got a minute 40 to go in the third quarter. Kansas giving CU all it can handle. The crowd trying to help the CU defense now. It's third and three for Kansas. Tony Sands met by Darius Holland. It's going to be close. And there's an official timeout on the field. Tony Sands has lost his shoe. It's going to be fourth down. That's a play that I think, hindsight being 20-20, Glenn Mason might not run a draw because it takes too long to develop, and Sands got the ball about nine yards deep in the backfield. No footing, so you take the quickness away, the cutting ability, and I think it's tough to pick up four yards in these conditions with the draw. Well, with Darian Hagan out with an ankle injury, Rico Smith has been doing the punt returning chores all day. Rico fields it about his own 34 there. And just make sure he holds on to the ball. Less than 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. CU has the ball down by seven points. Tonight at 6.30, catch the beat. Broncos beat with Gary Miller. He'll take a look ahead to tomorrow's pivotal game in Kansas City against the Chiefs. He'll have interviews, scouting reports, and some special features. That's Broncos beat tonight at 6.30 on Channel 4, the home of the Denver Broncos. CU has the ball at its own 42-yard line. Three men lined up behind the quarterback, Vance Joseph. This is Lamont Warren with a nice hole. And he gets it across midfield. A gain of about 11 yards on the play. Lamont Warren, after the fumble, is doing a better job of taking care of the football. See both hands over it. And again, we talked about his strength. Paul Friday, number 14, in on the tackle after initially Doug Terry stands him up, but Warren very close to first down yardage. He's going to be an exciting player to watch the next three years in Boulder. 12 carries for 32 yards today, playing with a dislocated shoulder. Many guys, I think, would say, let me get well for the bowl game, but not him. Tony Sands having somebody lace his shoe back up. Can't do that with gloves. And Warren does pick up first down yardage. <laughs> Buffs have the ball at the Kansas 49-yard line. Warren again, trying to push ahead. Gets to about the 45, and that's the end of the third quarter. Buffs with the ball in Kansas territory, and down to the Jayhawks, 24-17. On my first job back in the 60s, I traveled out west a lot. The only place original Coors was sold, which made me a very popular guy. <laughs> Here's Steve swapping me his old stereo for a case. I think he took me. I used to bring Coors back in my trunk. It was like home delivery, fresh from the Rockies. Ta-da! After I got married, I changed jobs, but not beers. Hey, the best things in life never change.
The Coldstream Guards at the Denver Coliseum for one show only, November 17th. To charge tickets, call 893-4100. Presented by Robert Garner Center Attractions and News 4. Today's game is brought to you by Grease Monkey and by Samsonite. Both proud companies for Colorado. And by La Victoria Salsa. By Subway Sandwiches and Salads. And by Kinko's. There's a young Buffs fan more interested in sloshing around in the snow than the ball game. We've got a pretty good one going on here. Oh, that's a nice little trick. Yeah, he's safe. The umpire calls him safe. We've got a pretty good one going here right now. We're starting the fourth quarter. Kansas leading the Buffs 24-17. Buffs have the ball in Kansas territory. This is James Hill. Hasn't gotten a lot of work today, but gets it inside the 40-yard line. Steve Harvey and Paul Friday, the tackles. That brings up third and two for the Buffs. They're sitting on the Kansas 40-yard line. In case you're wondering, the last time that that man lost to Kansas here in Boulder, 1984, Jayhawks beat the Buffs 28-27. to That was the year Colorado won one game all year. And that's McCartney's only loss to Kansas in his 10 years here. Pitch back to Joseph. Wants to go long. Intercepted. Intercepted by Tim Hill. And Hill, with a nice little run back, fumbles the ball, but his own man picks it up. It went right into the hands of Kyle Moore. So the Bluffs, the Buffs blow another opportunity to try and tie this ball game up. Vance Joseph intercepted. There's a flag on the play, and I'm not sure that this one might not come back. Vance Joseph had nowhere to throw the football. Flea flicker, and I mean nobody opened up. Kansas gets called for holding. Was this before the interception, however? Or was it during the run back? Lamont Warren to the line and back to Vance Joseph. When Vance caught the ball on the pitch, there was nobody even past the line of scrimmage. Then he tried to, I think he tried to throw the ball away, frankly. Westbrook was covered. The interception run out of the end zone by Tim Hill, who fumbled. I think the holding was after the interception. Maybe not. Holding on the defense, first down. Now it had to be before the interception. Maybe well, that's well, why great. nobody was down the field. I mean, when Vance Joseph caught the pitch back from Lamont Warren, there was not a CU receiver past about eight yards of the line of scrimmage. Glenn Mason chiding the officials right now. Nice call, I believe he said. Very sarcastically. A new life for the Buffs. They retain possession, and they're down to the Kansas 30-yard line. 14 minutes to go in the game. Lamont Warren on first down gets a couple yards. Harvey and Stubblefield stop him. Here's some scores for you from around the Big 8. Nebraska, no problem with Iowa State in the third quarter. Kansas State shutting out Mizzou, 20-zip. And Colorado State now behind at home against New Mexico in the season finale for the Rams. And there's a score from the Big 10. Michigan looking like it's on its way to another Rose Bowl appearance, beating Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. Second and eight for CU from the Kansas 28-yard line. Lamont Warren gets another three or four yards. Harvey the tackle. We're told the holding call on Paul Friday, one of the safeties for the Kansas Jayhawks. Glenn Mason will point to that call after this game, especially if Colorado should win as one of the primary reasons. Third and three for CU. James Hill. Does he have first down yardage? It'll be close. He's got it. And yes, referee Terry Turlington says the first down. Well, you want to keep pounding the fullback, and Hill gets this football and just angles to the left, picks up first down yardage. 
in the option game, you always want to make sure you keep the fullback in the game. Sometimes you tend to forget him because you've got a quarterback and a pitchman who can run the ball as well. Buffs are at the Kansas 19-yard line with a first down. Lamont Warren blocking ahead of him. And he gets in for the score. Boy, everybody did their job there, Dave. Lamont Roran runs under control with speed. The handoff, watching pick and choose as to where he's going. Good job out front. That's Sean Brown with the block. Michael Westbrook also doing a good job downfield. You need those receivers to get in front of people. That creates the ability for the running back to choose which direction he wants to go, and Warren just tiptoed in. That's just the way you draw it up. And now Colorado's taking a timeout. I don't think there'll be any discussion about a two-point play here. Still over 12 minutes to go in the game. The extra point attempt would tie this ball game up with 12-11 to go. Warren gets a good block from Jim Hansen. Also, nice job up front by the offensive line. That's tough to cut that way. You run under control, and you run with speed. Receivers downfield, and Warren scampers into the end zone. And this freshman is playing with a left shoulder that's been banged up pretty good this year. Last week, he came out of the game against Oklahoma State with what they were calling a separated shoulder. And here he is today carrying, I believe that was his 15th carry of the day. Clint Mason's not talking about that run. He's talking about the holding call. How can you make a holding call on a play like that? And that's exactly what Glenn Mason, maybe in other words, is saying. You think he was worried when his team was down 14 points, Dave? You, you bet. I'll tell you, the difference between playing in the blockbuster or the Cotton Bowl and playing in a game like the Gator Bowl could mean anywhere from 1.3 to $2 million. It looks like Colorado's got their offense back in the game, and they're going to go for two. Quite an interesting call here. Well, the Buffs could have kicked the extra point and tied the game up. Instead, with 12-11 to go in the game, they're going to go for a two-point conversion and try to take the lead. A good rush, and Joseph throws the ball away. So Kansas keeps the lead, 24 to 23. Well, he's trying to get the ball to Sean Brown, but because of the backside blitz, Joseph couldn't set and really get anything on the throw. And I think what that conversion is all about, if Colorado fails as they did, they need a field goal to win the game. Colorado would lose, really, if they tied. You can see the backside rush got to Vance Joseph before he could get anything on the throw, and the ball was way short of Sean Brown. I want to argue with you about that one in a second. We'll be right back. Prices are low at Subway, but I'd rather focus on sandwiches. People call them hoagies or heroes or submarines because they're shaped like submarines, but we call them Subway sandwiches. Our six-inch meatball sub features meatballs and sauce on bread I just baked, all for a low economical price. I won't say how low, but you'll probably find enough in the cushions of your couch. For 25 years, Subway has quietly made some of the best sandwiches anywhere. Like the six-inch meatball sub, only $1.69, only at Subway. I have this fantasy where Steve takes me to this very romantic place for a candlelight dinner in his Nissan Pathfinder. We sit at a table for two that has this really nice view. This picante sauce says it's better than the salsa made in New York City. They don't say hi, it stacks up against La Victoria. I wonder why. I wonder if it's cause La Victoria uses fresh tomatoes, peppers, and onions. I wonder if it's cause La Victoria has always made thick, chunky salsa. I wonder if it's cause La Victoria flat out tastes better. Mmm, that's it. More and more people are switching to La Victoria. No wonder. All right, let's go back to that debate, Dave Logan. You're playing Bill McCartney and telling me what's, what's in his head, what he's thinking, going for the two-pointer. I think 
I'd rather have a tie right now and take a chance on tying at the end of the ball game than being down a point and taking another loss, possibly. Well, I think it's a call that will be debated. I'm simply telling you, I think what he's thinking here, even if we're tied, we've got to score to win. Otherwise, the tie to us is like a loss. So now we have to score a field goal. We have to kick a field goal in order to win. We'll talk more about it after this. Okay, Charlie Bowen on the kickoff return. Not much room up the middle. He pushes the pile up across the 25-yard line. Where this strategy really comes back to hurt Bill McCartney is if Kansas can somehow score a touchdown. Because with a touchdown and an extra point, they go eight points ahead. Then the best Colorado can do, hypothetically, is tie the game. I think what McCartney is, is, is doing here is saying, hey, if we're tied at 24, we still need a field goal to win. Now we need a field goal to win as well. And he's counting on the defense to hold Kansas down. Seven plays, 57 yards, over three and a half off the clock. Warren from 12 yards out. Well, Bill McCartney showed he can make some gutsy calls. He made one last week against Oklahoma State. Let's see if this one works for him also. That time, the pass from Hillary to Dwayne Chandler, the tight end, who already has a touchdown reception on the day. Marcellus Elder and Chris Hudson bring him down. If you were asking personally what I would do there, I would kick. I would kick it, take the tie, and then hope that I've got enough time in 12 minutes to stop Kansas and get my offense moving. You see the first Big A team to have over 300 yards against the Buff defense. First down for Kansas. This is Roger Robin. Oh, I know you were just expressing what Bill McCartney might have been thinking. I'm just not so sure I agree with it. I'm not so sure I do either. Then again, that's why he gets paid the money to coach this team. Second and nine for Kansas. This time the pass dropped by George White. <laughs> and boy, the officials are taking some lumps out here this afternoon. The umpire got run over by Jeff Bruner that time. As an official, you don't know whether to move or to stand still, try to get little. John Leinbach, the umpire, watch left side of your screen. Oh. <laughs> Maybe go to one knee and just, if you got your whistle in your mouth on that one, you might suck it right down the windpipe. Third and nine. This time complete to Jim New in CU territory. Boy, Hillary had trouble finding his feet as he went back to pass, but he fought him in time to hit New. Well, this is a big throw and a blown coverage. New in the slot. Greg Thomas is playing zone, but Greg Beekert, New was on the outside, excuse me. Beekert is running across the other direction with the underneath tight end. And New is all by himself. Does a good job of covering up the football and picking up a huge first down for the Jayhawks. Down to the Buffs 37 yard line. We've got 10.40 to go in the game. George White. He's inside the 35. Ted Johnson to tackle. I wish I could be more precise for you on the yard marker. But it's hard to see through the snow right now. As you can tell, that's basically the shot that Dave and I have from up in the booth. Hard to tell exactly what yard line they're on. But the scoreboard says the 35 of CU. Second and seven. The pitch to White. Elder hits him first. Bruner finishes him off. Marcellus Elder, about 290 pounds, will come from the top side of the screen, run through a block behind the fullback, and get to George White. I think George a bit stunned there. Got underneath Elder, and Jeff Bruner cleaned him up for about an eight-yard loss. I'll tell you what, under the conditions, this has been a pretty good game. Oh, yeah. You know, I didn't think we'd have a whole lot of offense because it's hard to hold on to the ball. 
But we've got all together 47 points on the board between the two teams with 9.15 to go in the game. It's third and 11. Complete to Drayton. He might be a little short of the first down. Greg Beekert stopped him short. So now Glenn Mason has a decision to make. It is going to be fourth down. I'm guessing that he'll probably have to go for it. It'd be about 47 or 48 yards. Is Chip Hillary hurt? Kick. Is Hillary hurt right there? One of his hurt or just cold. Hillary got blasted after he threw the ball. He might be a little bit sore. Takes the screen. Ooh. Oh, boy. He took one right in the stomach from Ronnie Wolfork. I think Mason's got to go for this. He's fourth down in about a yard. I don't think Eichloff in these conditions can kick. And plus, he's got the lead. Keep that in mind. He's one point ahead. Well, you made the call, Dave. Kansas is going to go for it. It's fourth down, one yard to go. They're at the CU 29-yard line. He tries to kick the field goal. It's a 46-yarder under lousy conditions. So here we go. George White stays on his feet and gets the first down. He escaped the tackle in the backfield by Marcellus Elder. Well, he ran right underneath Marcellus Elder, who had him about two yards behind the line of scrimmage. I don't think Elder even gets blocked. George White slips, gets the ball. Elder's got him here and whiffs. White does a nice job of keeping his balance. Six feet, 170-pound sophomore. That's like running through a tunnel. He's one of those little guys. You know, Marcellus is so big, and, and White just snuck under his armpit there. First down for Kansas at the CU 26-yard line. The give is to Robin. Inside the 25, Beekert the tackle. Boy, Beekert's got to have 20 tackles today already. I'd love to get a count on how many players he's brought down today. Been an impressive drive by Kansas. Under eight minutes to go. Kansas leading the Buffs 24-23. There is a lot at stake today. Bowl games, possibly millions of dollars, and pride. This is the other fullback, Monty Cousins, and he's racked up quickly. Well, what a nice play there by Jeff Bruner, who grabbed Cousins with his left hand. You wouldn't think that you could grab a jersey and hang on. Watch Jeff Bruner, right side of the screen, get to the fullback. His left hand will get a jersey. He just hangs on to him. That's tremendous strength in your forearms and in your hands. Bruner has filled in this whole second half for nose tackle Joel Steed, who came out of the ball game in the first half, we believe with an ankle injury. Well, there's a timeout on the field taken by Kansas. That's the Jayhawks' first time out of the day. Both teams have two of them left. We're going to take a break at Folsom. Prices are low at Subway, but I'd rather focus on sandwiches. People call them hoagies or heroes or submarines because they're shaped like submarines. But we call them Subway sandwiches. Our six-inch meatball sub features meatballs and sauce on bread I just baked, all for a low economical price. I won't say how low, but you'll probably find enough in the cushions of your couch. For 25 years, Subway has quietly made some of the best sandwiches anywhere. Like the six-inch meatball sub. Only $1.69, only at Subway. Phil, how's sales doing with their presentation? We're ready. When your department has to deliver, call Kinko's, the copy center. We take care of the copies so you can take care of business. Now you can get the highest quality copies in town delivered right to your door. Just call Kinko's, the copy center. We pick up your originals and deliver clear, quality copies directly to you. No more traffic, no more lines. Depend on Kinko's. We pick up and deliver. A car is a car. 
It won't make you handsome or prettier or younger, and if it improves your standing with the neighbors, then you live among snobs. A car is steel, electronics, rubber, plastic, and glass. A machine. And in the end, may the best machine win. Subaru. What to drive. It's a wet afternoon in Boulder. And Kansas right now trying to rain on CU's parade. 24-23, the Jayhawks lead it. And they have the ball on the CU 20-yard line. And Chip Hillary is changing the play here. He's got about five seconds to snap the ball. It's third and five. That ball is tipped and incomplete. Looked like Jeff Bruner got a hand on it. Bill McCartney pacing. 6.53 to go in this game. Pretty good pressure up the middle. You see number 39, Jeff Bruner, got his right hand and right there tipped the ball. Hillary had Kenny Drayton open on the sideline, as you see, but the ball simply fluttered away. Uh, Bruner hasn't been playing nose tackle very long. He was recruited here in Boulder as a fullback. Dan Eichloff is going to try a field goal. Approximately 38 yards. And it's no good. That ball might have been tipped also. Eichloff put it to the left. So the score stays the same. I think Greg Thomas may have got a piece of this. Eichloff, as we've told you, maybe the Big Eight's best kicker. Thomas gets a jump left side of the screen. He got a piece of that football on his way down. I think that ball was low. I'm not sure Eichloff got enough height on the kick initially. I believe if Greg Thomas did block that field goal, that is the fifth time he's done that in his career here at CU, and that by far is a school record. So CU with the ball, Lamont Warren brought down quickly. That's Gilbert Brown. He's been in the CU backfield all day long. And there's a bunch of him to be back there, 6'3 and 305 pounds, and he and Dana Stubblefield have really played well the interior part of the defense for the Jayhawks. He was the uh, defensive MVP, by the way, last year. A second team, all Big 8 selection out of Detroit. Second and 16 for CU. They're on their own 15-yard line. Joseph dumps it off to Lamont Warren. Grabbed quickly from behind by Sylvester Wright. Sylvester Wright coming up with some big defensive plays here in the second half. If he doesn't grab a hold of Lamont Warren, Lamont has a lot of space in front of him. Five forty left, and the clock winding down. Kansas leading 24-23. The Buffs deep in their own territory. The 24-yard line. It's third and eight. Flag down. Joseph complete to his tight end, Sean Brown. He's got first down yardage, but now we have to find out what the penalty is all about. I think this is coming back. I think this is going to be a hold on Colorado. That's what you have. Bill McCartney's not going to like it. Glenn Mason's probably saying, hey, that makes up for the call you called on us holding when we intercepted the pass in the end zone. So instead of first and 10, it's going to be third and long. And Jay Lewenberg might have been the one they called there. That's exactly what the call is. Holding on the Buffs offensive captain. Wipes out the pass play, wipes out the first down. Ball is placed back at the CU 12. And the Buffs are looking at a third and 22 situation.
Vance Joseph, not a bad day filling in for Darian Hagan, who came out with an ankle injury in the first half. Tough conditions to play under. Flags down. Looked like a Kansas player jumped off sides. Nine Colorado may have moved less right side of the offensive line. Once again, young offensive line. Well, Brian Christian jumped for Kansas, but it was provoked by a CU lineman. Uh, the Buffs go in the wrong direction. Third and 27. The Buffs back at their own seven yard line. Joseph turns the corner. He's got the first down and goes out of bounds. Well, just like last week. Buffs need a big play to stay alive and Joseph gets it to him. Well, I tell you, this will be one that Glenn Mason will look at over and over again. Third and 27, about 27, from the Colorado three, about their three. Vance Joseph a simple option play and again he stretches the defense continues to run downhill at the angle the pitch man automatically takes the corner force away Vance breaks a tackle breaks another tackle an amazing 32 yard run his second consecutive week left as you mentioned with a big play this is James Hill with the carry And James picks up three, maybe four yards. Hard to tell with that snow on the ground. Colorado last week, they didn't try the field goal. They ran the fake. This game may come down to Jim Harper or someone kicking one in the snow. Second down for CU. Joseph, the swing pass to Lamont Warren. And gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe even a loss of one or two yards. Larry Thiel, the tackle. There's Jim Harper warming up in case he's needed. He might very well be. The Buffs down 24-23 with under four minutes to go now. That was a play that really Kansas did an excellent job defensively. Warren would have been better off just knocking the ball down, but you never know that as a receiver. You want to catch everything thrown to you. A loss of two yards on that last play. It's third and ten. The screen to nobody. Lamont Warren was supposed to grab that ball out of the air, but he was too busy blocking and being carried away on the play. And the Buffs will have to punt. Mitch Berger will do it. And right now, Kansas has nobody back to receive the punt. There's nobody back there for Kansas. Well, they're playing the fake right now. They don't care about the kick nor the roll of the football. They want to make sure Colorado doesn't pull anything tricky. And there it is to Scott Phillips. Brought down well, well short of the first down. So Kansas was not fooled on the fake punt well I gotta say you have to look at that call and shake your head three minutes and 21 seconds to go you still have two timeouts left if you kick the ball and this is hindsight you kick the ball down and hold them you expect to establish field position and maybe get a kick to win it now you've given Kansas field position at the very best if you stop them you're gonna have to go 70 or 80 yards for the winning kick And the second guessers will have a field day with this game. You now it's funny. Last week on the plane ride home, Bill McCartney came up to us and he said, you know, if that fake field goal against Oklahoma State didn't happen, didn't go the right way, they'd have talked about that more than they talked about punting to the rocket in last year's Orange Bowl. Well, they might be talking about this because a couple of calls did not go CU's way today. A couple of questionable calls. Kansas, Kansas stays on the ground. Kansas 
if they can knock out a couple of first downs, can pretty much seal this game up. On the other hand, Colorado defensively has got to hold them from a first down. Still have two timeouts left, but they're inside three minutes. George White got three yards on that play, so it's second and seven. Kansas with the ball on the Buffs 38. And as Dave told you, the clock winding down under 2.50 to go right now. The Cotton Bowl and Blockbuster Bowl are here to scout CU. But I can't imagine either one would want the Buffs if they take their third loss today. That would be four blemishes on their record. I think you're going to get a timeout here. You can't let all this time expire from the clock. You're right, CU takes its second time out of the half. That leaves the Buffs with one. And we're going to take a break, too. On my first job back in the 60s, I traveled out west a lot. The only place original Coors was sold, which made me a very popular guy. <laughs> Here's Steve swapping me his old stereo for a case. I think he took me. I used to bring Coors back in my trunk. It was like home delivery, fresh from the Rockies. Ta-da! After I got married, I changed jobs, but not beers. Hey, the best things in life never change. This picante sauce says it's better than the salsa made in New York City. They don't say hi, it stacks up against La Victoria. I wonder why. I wonder if it's cause La Victoria uses fresh tomatoes, peppers, and onions. I wonder if it's cause La Victoria has always made thick, chunky salsa. I wonder if it's cause La Victoria flat out tastes better. Mmm, that's it. More and more people are switching to La Victoria. No wonder. From coast to coast, Dodge Caravan has happily served more families than any other minivan. But we've made it even better because we've come up with an all-wheel drive Dodge Caravan. So now you not only get a vehicle loaded with safety features, including the first minivan airbag, you've got one that automatically handles just about anything the weatherman can throw at it. No shifting, no levers, no sweat. Now ask your Dodge dealer about the security of Caravan's ultimate guarantee. Things looking pretty bleak for the CU Buffs right now. Kansas with a one-point lead. 2.28 to go in the game, and Kansas has the ball in CU territory. Chip Hillary, the Kansas quarterback, done a fine job controlling that Jayhawks offense today. It's third and three. And Hillary is short. Now, if you're the Jayhawks, you want to get up nice and slow. Let that clock run. 2.16, 2.15. The Buffs say they will use their last timeout. The Buffs with no timeouts left. Kansas has two left. Hey, really no decision here for Glenn Mason. He's talking to his offensive coaches. You've got to punt the ball. Colorado has used both timeouts. They've got none left. Punt the ball. Hope Eichloff can down it inside the 10. And if, if the Buffs can move 65 to 70 yards on this field and then hit the game-winning field goal, so be it. But if you go for it here and you miss, you've given Colorado an extra 30 yards that they would have to work for if you punt. Got to kick it. And as an addendum to that, the Buffs would have to go the length of the field with only 2.15 to go and no timeouts. Last time the Jayhawks beat CU was in 1984, seven years ago. So much at stake here. So much at stake. Kansas only has 10 players in the field. Now here comes number 11. The difference between playing in a New Year's Day game and one of the lesser games, lesser bowl games around the country. A big difference in money. CU's ranking at stake here. They're ranked 16th. They could fall out of the top 20 if they lose to Kansas today. By the way, a Kansas win would assure the Jayhawks of their first winning season in 10 years. Last time they were above 500 was 1981. They went 8-4 and four that year. That was also the year they last went to a bowl game, the Independence Bowl. Well, we've talked about Glenn Mason a lot in the baseball cap right there talking to Dan Eikloff, his kicker. He's done a terrific job. And what he's telling Eikloff right there, angle it for the sideline and kick it out of bounds. You know, when he came here, 
four years ago, he said, the first thing I have to do is change attitudes. Well, he's done that. A final out of Norman, Oklahoma. The Sooners beat Oklahoma State 21 to 6. And right here, with 2.15 to go, Kansas leading CU 24-23. Kansas and Dan Eichloff will be punting the ball, trying to pin CU back against its own goal line. Rico Smith will return this one. A high kick, but a little too far for Kansas taste. Into the end zone. So the Buffs have 80 yards to go with 2.09 left. Down by a point. And much the same as last week. You don't think about the 80 right now. You start thinking in increments of 10 to 12 yards. You've got to make sure you tell your players, get up off the ground, get lined up, get out of bounds with the ball if you possibly can. But if you're a Kansas Jayhawk, tackle people in the playing field and lay on them. Take your time getting up. Use as much time as you possibly can. And once again, maybe the most important stat as we begin this drive, CU has no timeouts. Vance Joseph at quarterback. The sophomore from Louisiana. In for the injured Darian Hagan. The screen to Lamont Warren. He's got to get out of bounds. And a flag on the field. If it holds, Warren has gotten them across the 30-yard line. I think Colorado may have had an illegal man downfield. We'll wait and see what the call was. Clint Moore was down a couple of yards trying to get in front of Lamont Warren with, with good hustle. Maybe it's against the Jayhawks. Maybe there'll be no flag. I'll tell you what, a screen pass caught behind the line of scrimmage so the flag's going to be waved off. You can leave the line of scrimmage after the ball is caught, and evidently that's what they're deciding happened. So the penalty flag is picked up, wiped off the board, and the gain remains. And if the ball is caught behind the line of scrimmage, less offensive lineman can be downfield. Joseph with nine passes on the day and a lot more to come. It's second and two. Lamont Warren, first down. And gets it almost to the 45-yard line. Paul Friday, the tackle. The Buffs hurry back to the line of scrimmage. They're at their own 42. See, in college football, the clock is stopped on every first down until they get the yards markers set up. Now it starts 153 and counting. A wobbly pass incomplete to Westbrook. That's okay. A couple seconds off the clock. Now they can reset. See, I think right now, even though you have no timeouts, yardage and downs are more important than, than stopping the clock. You've still got a minute and 48 seconds to go. So you worry about second, third, and fourth down right now. Later, you'll worry about time. Second and ten. From their own 42-yard line, the Buffs. Joseph, complete to Rico Smith, and out of bounds, which stops the clock again. Smith's second catch on the day, and he is down around the Kansas 35-yard line. Boy, Rico Smith makes a nice adjustment on this pass. This is a corner route. They got a two-deep zone. Vance Joseph with a terrific throw, but watch the adjustment in tough weather. Folks, I tell you, that's a tough catch when it's this cold and snowing. And he got out of bounds and stopped the clock to boot. Buffs looking to get into field goal range. Lamont Warren with room. Down the sideline and out of bounds, which stops the clock again. And Lamont Warren brings CU down to approximately the six yard line. I would call this field goal range. A minute 31 to go, the Buffs down by one. But now what you want to do is use all the clock you can and not give Dan Eichloff, the Kansas kicker, a chance to win it for KU. 
Lamont Warren on the draw play makes a good choice downfield by heading toward the sideline. It looked like he might try to cut it up inside. But got out of bounds, and Colorado now can get into their regular offense and try to use as much of this 131 as they can. First and goal from the eight. This is James Hill battering his way down to the five. And now Kansas will be the ones hopping up quickly, and Colorado will take some time. We've got an CU, injured Jayhawk player. Excuse see me, you with no timeouts. Kansas has one timeout. The injured player is Chris Mamalanga. Really, Colorado fans booing, but his injury helps the Buffs. They can regroup, get in the huddle, decide what they want to do on second and third down, and the clock is stopped while they do it. And the fans obviously think that Kansas is trying to stop the clock and fake the injury on the field, but that's not so. This kid's shaking up. Second and goal from the three. We've got a minute 18 to go. The Buffs down by one point. We should tell you that Bill McCartney does not have a lot of confidence in his kicking game right now. He reevaluated the whole situation this week. He wants to get into the end zone. And James Hill is very close. Let's see what they say. I don't think he's in. See, if you're Colorado, it's right. I think you want to huddle now. I want you to take as much time as you can. Third down, 56 seconds and counting. They initially went to the line of scrimmage, and Vance Joseph said, hey, wait a minute. We got time. Let's huddle up. At the one-foot line, it's third and one. Hill is in for the touchdown. And CU takes the lead with 40 seconds to go. Well, I'll tell you, two consecutive weeks of this, if I hadn't seen it, I wouldn't believe it. And both drives engineered by Vance Joseph. And Glenn Mason has got to be shocked at how quickly Colorado moved down the field with no timeouts. Well, we've got a few ball representatives here that are saying their hallelujahs right now, yeah. particularly the Cotton and the Blockbuster, who would like to have CU. The only time I can think of that the Cotton and Blockbuster will high five. <laughs> Jim Harper, the extra point. He's got it. And CU now with a 30 to 24 lead, 40 seconds left. And you saw Bill McCartney. We'll take a look at him after this replay. Watch James Hill stopped initially and is pushed from behind by Mike Westbrook. Look at Westbrook saying, get in the end zone. Is that legal? Well, technically, no. You can't aid a player over the line. But kind of tough to call in all that mass of bodies. And right now, Bill McCartney was talking to Brian Cabral about special teams. And Mike Berry, this game is not over. Kansas still has one timeout left. Chip Hillary can certainly throw the ball. And although Dan Eikloff has been a miss with a couple of field goals today, he is still the best kicker and a guy that's capable. You don't want to have it come down to him hitting or missing to lose. Well, you couldn't ask for more from CU and quarterback Vance Joseph. Eight plays. 80 yards to take the lead. Dave, should I tell him now? Even though there's four, 40 seconds left, should I tell him what you said at the half? What did I say? Dave Logan, folks, predicted that CU would come back and win this ball game when the Buffs were down by 14. Brown. And again, we expect that of a guy who yeah. graduated from CU. Yeah, my colors show, but at least <laughs> I didn't off the air. <laughs> Even the Freedom Ball's got to be happy about this because Kansas really has made a nice showing for themselves. And again, this game is not over. 40 seconds to go. Eichloff has a 58-yarder to his credit in his Kansas career. Mitch Berger kicking off for the Buffs. He's done a great job of it all day. Three of his kicks have gone beyond the end zone for no return. A squibber here. Kansas with a nice run back. That ball is brought to midfield by Chris Powell. First time he's touched the ball all day. Midfield for Kansas. So it's not over yet. 
35 seconds to go. Kansas has one timeout left. I'll tell you what, though. If CU hangs on, all of us who questioned a couple of those calls by Coach Bill McCartney are going to be eating crow. These are some of the people who helped us put on this production today. Hillary, complete to George White. And he gets it down to about the CU 42-yard line. And now Kansas trying to use the clock, 23, 22, 21 and counting. They need about 10 more yards. That would make it 47 for Dan Eichloff. CU with a six-point lead. Hillary's pass broken up. Oh. He caught but it. But a lineman catches the ball in midair and runs with it. Is that him? I couldn't tell who the lineman was because of the pilot. Might have been Hesley Hempstead. Instead, I think, Les, it was John, John Jones. 6'2", 265-pound freshman from Los Angeles. The thrill of his lifetime. But since we've second-guessed, as many will, the squib kick didn't squib. Kansas got the ball close to midfield, and with five seconds to go, exactly what Bill McCartney didn't want to have happen is going to happen. Dan Eichloff is going to kick the ball with a chance to win it for Kansas. I don't see Eichloff on the field. Now, it's CU 30 yes, right, to 24. I forgot. I thought they were three points down. No, th they need a touchdown here. 30 to 24 with five seconds to go. So you're going to see a Hail Mary pass. No doubt about it. Chip Hillary right there is going to throw the ball up into the end zone. Kansas will run three or four receivers down there, try to tip it to one another, while CU sends a number of defensive backs back to the end zone and try and knock the ball away. Three wide receivers are lined up at the bottom of your screen. You can't see them right now, but they will head towards the end zone. Hillary. And the ball is knocked down by the Buffs. The clock expires. And CU, for the second week in a row, escapes with a win against the Big 8 opponent. The Orange Bowl hopes are still alive. The Cotton Bowl hopes. The Blockbuster hopes. <laughs> CU with one game left. And the Buffs and Michael Westbrook sliding in the snow. Too close for comfort, but they'll take it. Glenn Mason congratulating Darian Hagan, the Buffs quarterback who did not play in the second half because of an injury. Boy, this is going to be a long plane ride home for Mason and his Jayhawks. They thought they had this game. At one time, leading 24 to 10. With less than a minute left, leading 24 to 23. And then Lamont Warren and Vance Joseph direct an 80-yard drive for the Buffs. And James Hill went in for the winning score. Let's take a break at Folsom Field. The final 30 to 24. We'll be right back to wrap it up. Between you and me, this is my best value at 22 grand. The price of today's automobile is higher than ever before. I can get you into a 48-month payment plan. No problem. The right. terms of financing are longer than ever before. Let's go into my office. That's why regular oil and lubrication maintenance every 90 days at Grease Monkey is more important than ever before. 21.5. What do you say? Grease Monkey. Extending the life of your car. We could go 60 months on the pay. Dear Mom, I wish we could come home for the holidays. I really miss the family. There may be a way. Wendy's and News 4 have teamed up to send four lucky people home for the holidays. Just go to a participating Wendy's restaurant and pick up an entry form. Then write and tell us why we should send you home. Hurry, we need your entry by December 8th. Dear Mom, thanks to Wendy's and News 4, we're coming home. Airfare, courtesy of Professional Travel Corporation. Brought to you by Wendy's and News 4. Can't decide whether to lease or buy? <gasps> Do both! 
Yes, with Gold Key Plus financing from your Jeep and Eagle dealer. Get a rugged Cherokee Laredo loaded with 190 horses, four-wheel drive, automatic transmission, air conditioning, power windows, locks, tilt wheel. Okay. And the Cherokee Laredo is just $2.99 a month. So, hurry to your Jeep and Eagle dealer for a rugged Jeep Cherokee at just $2.99 a month. It's a deal that'll leave you breathless. See your local Jeep Eagle dealer. Say, have you ever seen one of these? It's First Federal Bank's new Visa checking card. Use it like a credit card, but it works like a check. Your charges are paid automatically from your First Federal checking account. When you get the new Visa checking card, you can get a new First Federal checking account and your first box of checks free. With all that and the new Visa checking card, why not make First Federal your bank? Since 1885, First Federal, Colorado's convenient consumer bank. Well, CU Athletic Director Bill Morrell sticking his head into the broadcast booth there saying, no problem, we knew he'd pull it out all along. The Bull hopes still alive, the Big Bulls. Buffs beat the Kansas Jayhawks 30-24. to The snow never stopped falling, and CU never gave up on itself. Well, again, two consecutive weeks. They come with uh, last-ditch effort drives, Vance Joseph at the helm, and... I had a mark down for a field goal, so I thought they were for a time being with two points ahead, but a touchdown with no timeouts and 80 yards in the drive, uh, that's the, the, the kind of thing the champions are made of. In Colorado, their hopes for the Orange and even the Cotton Bowl still very much alive. Well, it's no wonder you worry about a kid like Eichloff. He kicks him so well. Wouldn't be surprised if he could kick two in the last 30 seconds there. But the Buffs hold on to win in Boulder. 30 to 24. The executive producer of today's game is Tom Edwards. Today's game was produced by Terry Trevato and directed by Tom Richards. Our engineer in charge, Doug Houston. For Dave Logan and Mark McIntosh and the rest of the crew here at Channel 4, I'm Les Shapiro saying so long from Folsom Field in Boulder. This has been a presentation of Channel 4 Sports, the home of the CU Buffaloes.